It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, states of emergency. No way, bro. No. No. Catastrophic flooding hits the Northeast, destroying homes and communities. There's no words. <laughs> Just even unbelievable doesn't explain it. While one of the longest heat waves ever grips tens of millions across the southern U.S., we're live on the scene and Al's tracking all of it. Plus, sleep struggles, a new look at why it is more difficult for women to get a good night's rest. Women are a little bit more prone to feelings of worry, feelings of anxiety and depression. They're shouldering more household duties than a typical male. As we go inside the battle of the sexes over sleep. And New York City Cruise, the cast of Mission Impossible, hits the Big Apple. Star Tom Cruise now flying high on the eve of the film's big release. Listen to me. The world's coming after you. Stay out of my way. Today, Tuesday, July 11th, 2023. Visiting from Kansas City. Hilliard, Ohio. Edmonton, Illinois. And Fort Worth, Texas. Texas. On a family road trip from Clarksville, Tennessee. Out of my chest. Sending love to my sister Meredith from Virginia Beach. Hello to all our family. We love you. From West City, Missouri. On my high school senior trip. Celebrating our anniversary. Married for 36 years. Woo! Well, we're back at 12 now with today's talker. And uh, do you ever toss and turn for hours trying to fall asleep? Or are you like me and you wake up in the middle of the night with your mind racing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all nodding along. Yeah. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. Saying yes is, uh, well, it's a good chance you're a woman if you said yes. Although everybody experienced. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Uh, Jen is here with a closer look at some of the reasons why. Yeah. Okay. So we all know how important a good night's rest is. But for so many women, actually waking up feeling refreshed seems like an impossible code to crack. It's almost two in the morning. I'm not tired. Reason I can't sleep number 2,133. I can fall asleep. I just don't stay asleep. If you're a woman dealing with sleep issues, you aren't alone. According to a recent survey by the National Sleep Foundation, women are more likely to report trouble falling asleep and staying asleep than men. With the U.S. Office of Women's Health stating that one in four women has insomnia symptoms. Women do experience many more sleep difficulties than do men. Dr. Rebecca Robbins is a sleep expert at Harvard Medical School. Women are a little bit more prone to feelings of worry, feelings of anxiety and depression. They're shouldering more household duties than a typical male, which generally creep into the workday. And then the workday spills into the evening and then that spills into sleep. Dr. Robbins says hormones play a big role in disrupting sleep, too. They can cause mood changes like increased feelings of anxiety and physical symptoms like cramps, which may disrupt sleep. Pregnancy and menopause can also cause physical symptoms like nausea and hot flashes that can negatively impact sleep. And we're not immune from it either. I just toss and turn. Do you sleep well? Uh, no, because there was a lot of turmoil. Sometimes kids don't go to sleep. So what can you do to ensure a good night's sleep? Sleep experts say women should create a cool, dark and quiet sleep environment. Set a strict time to start winding down for bed, including putting your phone down. Try relaxation techniques such as meditation or writing down your to-do list for the next day before bed. And if your partner snores, you may want to sleep in separate bedrooms. If you're listening today and you're like, oh my gosh, there are hormones, there are environmental factors, all of these things are conspiring against me in my sleep. But do rest assured that if you're diligent, if you practice these healthy sleep strategies, you will be amazed. And Dr. Robbins also said if you're experiencing trouble sleeping consistently for more than two months, you need to seek professional help. Wow. So what's the main reason that well, you don't sleep well, do you think? I think, and, and, and I love that the men are joining, yeah. but for, for a lot of us... Don't Hovering, we, some might say. Eye <laughs> yeah. sure. rolling. I, so. Staring. Um, I don't think so. I think in many ways, women are the primary caregivers, you know, and, and our... The kid gets up. The yeah. kid gets up. Yeah. If my child gets up and has a bad dream... 
they don't wake up Henry Hager. Yeah, they wake, they wake up, up you. one person. Because yeah. guess who gets out of bed? Yeah, me. Yeah, what right. about you guys? Yeah, I think for me it is it's the kids stuff. <laughs> you can go story. ahead and say it. Go SG, go. Go ahead. I have no thoughts on this subject at all. I'll never throw Mike under the bus. No, no, I won't. I do think I would say I think I am a light sleeper, and I've become more of a light sleeper since I had kids. And I think a lot of moms are like that. They're on a hair trigger. Right. And then for that reason, trying to be so diplomatic here, any disturbance, noise disturbance at all, can correct, can wake you up. I mean, I have found the summer has been especially difficult because the kids' schedules are a little off. It's harder to get them to go to sleep. Yes. Yeah. Right. I just feel like men drop off to sleep. Like oh, yeah. you could be in the middle of a conversation uh, or have worries and then Do all you wake up in the middle of the night sleep. and worry? Yes. You well, do? I, don't, yes. I just wake up to go to the bathroom and yes. go back to sleep. And then do you start but, worrying? Because if no, I get up to go to the bathroom, I don't then think, I worry. Yeah. No, right. I think of the to-do like, like, But I think the thing is that I've found it, literally, and it was it's been recently, having a ritual. Like yeah. I try so to go to bed at the do? same time. Like yeah. I try that in the last several months, nine o'clock is their drop dead time to get to bed. Uh, I like cool sheets, mm -hmm. yes. uh, which drives me crazy because the kids think it's funny to get in bed warm up the yeah. and warm up the sheets <laughs> yeah. for me. And you don't and like then, that. Yeah, I come out of the bathroom. I was like, what are you all doing here? <laughs> yeah. It's, and it's how, different how, for you because your kids are older now. They are, yeah. but you know, they, but even when they're home, like they're, uh, Leela's coming home in, in yeah. the next couple of they're all going to pile in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They are. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're pre-warming right your there. sheets. Yeah. Like, JBH, for me, listen, I, I to your point, I can yeah. fall asleep like that. Yeah. You get but up. in the middle of the night, if Lindsay gets up or one of the kids slides in, I can't get back so, to sleep. Yeah. So if you're looking at your phone, that's the other thing. This yeah, is, um, do not, do you look at your phone? No. Craig? Not in the middle of the night, not when I wake okay, up. Okay, no. because I, he, he can't. Can't. Craig, no, you are, swear, you I'm look not, what time it is. No. He doesn't. I, okay, I'm okay. You, because the that's Take the man at his word. <laughs> okay, I'll take him at his word. That's what you should not do. And drinking too much caffeine okay. after Before a certain bed. time. Yeah. I did a sleep okay. study once, and the one thing, I have, I'm not really that good at doing it, but the ladies, you know when you're tossing and turning, and you mm -hmm. can't sleep, and you're like, why did I quit piano lessons? Why did I Why? Well, for whatever your version is, what she is says. What is this video of you sleeping? Oh, yeah. yeah. I slept oh, on I camera in the show like three times. What did she say? What did she say? She said, when you're like that, that's a hotel, by the way. I don't have that set up at my house. <laughs> it would be great, though. You get up and walk around. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Oh, she oh. says, like, I don't know. Sometimes oh, I will go and, like, I'll just get up and go get a glass of water and just try to, because she's the it. worst thing to do is just, like, lay there oh. and count cheap yeah. or flip out about not Several sleeping. Several get up and read. Yeah. For a yeah. little, like a half hour, and then she yeah. comes. But back. not oh, on sorry. an iPad. Okay. No, well, you right. do. What's your? I just okay. go. I'm actually. I slept ten hours last yeah. night. All right. <laughs> Way to go, Jenna. Where you go? Right. Twenty-two bedtime. <laughs> Mr. Roker. So who took care? Of, who, so did Henry? My Hager? children are at camp. Oh. oh. You that's when you get the by the way. That's when you That's when you get the good stuff. I have an empty house yes. <laughs> with nice. Daisy Jones in the six. No wonder you look so fantastic. Oh yeah, it's good. Did you watch it? Not yet. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names. 
only on today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. America. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. We are back with a special edition of today's bestseller, sponsored by Amazon. Prime Day officially arrived overnight and shop today. Editorial director Adriana Brock and her team have already found the hottest deals. We're talking about everything from beauty to tech. All can be yours by scanning our QR code. Adriana, good morning. Hey, good morning. All right, so what are we starting off with? We are so excited for today. This is one of the biggest shopping days of the year. And let me tell you something. Our Shop Today team is on today.com right now, updating right now. all of our content. Mm -hmm. They were actually up since 4 a.m. Oh, my God. Updating our content every 15 to 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So what you see online is up to the minute updates. And let's kick it off with some fashion. Oh, okay. We've got Levi's. There's a ton oh. of denim deals. Mm -hmm. Levi's are our favorite right now. There's this debate about whether the skinny jeans are in or out. Uh -huh. Shop Today says they're in. They're These in. These start at $21 that are available in a wide range of sizes, colors. Uh -huh. Something to note, pricing can be dynamic these uh -huh. days because there are so many shades and color uh -huh. options and sizing. So it does fluctuate, but these start at $21. That is up to so 70% in other words, like maybe off. Check back and forth. Yes, okay. make sure to check on the website, scan the QR code. Okay, some kicks. And some kicks too. Mm -hmm. This is for all the start today folks out there. Yep. The people who love running or working out, this is a great time to buy a pair of shoes. ASICs are on sale right now. Wow. They are up to 43% off, mm -hmm. starting at just under $40 for the um the Gel Venture, which right. is a really great one with shock absorption, really great for strides, great mm -hmm. made for running, mm -hmm. but also really good for walking. And the, men's the no slip, just slip the it in. No Slip Adidas. We've seen a ton of the men's stuff also mm -hmm. on sale, up to 57% off. So okay. these are great deals right now to get. Now some beauty stuff. All right, beauty. I, you know I love my beauty I products, and so do our audience viewers out there. Uh, Shop Today found some of the best deals on luxury beauty products mm -hmm. from Color Wow, Sunday Riley, Lancome, It Cosmetics, wow. up to 40% off. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to highlight this good jeans from Sunday Riley. Okay. This is an anti-aging serum. It's just $30 and one cent right now, 30% off mm -hmm. a shop today. Beauty award winner. This is one of the best products out there. If you ask me, if you're into skincare and when it comes to makeup, and who is it? don't don't on. sleep on the it Cosmetics superhero mascara. It's 40% mm -hmm. off right now. Just $16. Really great products, all on today.com. All on today, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, something I care about more, tech. Yes, yes, I knew you'd be into this. So I know you like your Apple Watch, I do. so do I. Mine's a little bit slow because I've got an older edition. If you're uh -huh. looking to get an Apple Watch, the Series 8, which is the oh, top wow. of the yep. line there one, you go. right now 30% off, mm -hmm. just under $280. This has all the bells and whistles that we love about our Apple Watch. As you know, the talk to text, the answering yep. the phone calls. That's right. But also, this has some health features, which is really oh, great. Yeah, if the, you're, the watch uh, with the heart rate. The heart rate stuff. monitor. It also tells you if you're overheating. Really great feature. Craig's already uh, snagged one of these. Craig's already on these. I know he loves his Beats. A lot of people out there, too. If you're like me, you're losing those earbuds. Try to look into the Beats. Right now, these are $89.99. That is up to 40% off. Wow. The Studio Beats, they've got mm -hmm. the noise canceling. They've got the little tips that... Um, come in different sizes right, so they'll a, fit in. Do so a you, custom fit So thing. you won't lose them. <laughs> yeah, a lot of great tech time. deals. Again, this is just a preview of what mm -hmm. we have online right now. Still plenty of barbecue season left. Okay, can I just say something? Right now we're talking about all these great splurges and finds on tech and fashion and beauty, but it's also a good time to buy those affordable home upgrades. So sure. we found two under $15. Listen, get your pantry staples, get those tech kitchen updates. Mm -hmm. The dash meat thermometer is great. If you're like me and you're not the best cook, right. I tend to overcook steak that costs a lot of money. We don't want to do that. This is 70% off right now. Mm -hmm. It's $11.99 for the dash meat thermometer. Super easy to use. And it's a, you can use hot and cold. Yes, oh exactly. It's really easy How to use. How do it know? How do it know? It just know. does. And <laughs> Something then, very basic. Okay, yeah. this is super basic. This uh -huh. is um, the OxyClean laundry cleaning pods. They're $4.99 right now, which is 39% off. What? So this is a washing machine cleaner. Yes. To okay. clean your yes. washing machine. Yes, and a lot of people don't think about this, yeah. but there's grime and buildup. Oh, yeah. And we spoke. Well, sometimes you look in there, especially around the gasket. Yes, Ooh. exactly, exactly. And we spoke to an expert who said you should clean it every 30 cycles uh -huh. or every month. So this is another great staple to just pick up and keep keep 
in your laundry room. Fantastic. Yeah. Adri Adriana, thank you so much. Thank and you. to find these deals, hundreds of others, scan the QR code or head to today.com slash prime day. Adriana's back tomorrow for day two with more deals under 25 bucks. And we mentioned this segment solely features products available on Amazon, which is a sponsor of this segment and has an affiliate relationship with today. Guys. Al, thank you so much. All right, Chef Jose Andres turns the tables, making me the interview subject for his podcast. We have a fun conversation about food and family and so much more. But first, this is Today on NBC. restaurateur, humanitarian, and the founder of the nonprofit World Central Kitchen. He uses the power of food to help communities in times of crisis. Mm -hmm. He does so much. In fact, he also has a podcast. It's called Longer Tables with Jose Andres. And Hoda, he recently interviewed you. Yeah, we actually had a really cool conversation. He launched this podcast last year, and it has included some fascinating conversations with a whole bunch of guests like Ron Howard, Jane Goodall, Yo-Yo Ma. They do it over Zoom. They do it over a glass of sherry. They do it over some sliced ham. You talk about food, family, and his wonderful philanthropy. Hello, hello, Huda. So good to have you in my podcast, Longer Tables. Jose, I have to tell you, I'm honored to be sitting across your long table. I'm having a glass of sherry. You left me a glass of your sherry, too. Do you see that? Hey, hey. I'm having sherry, manzanilla, <laughs> iberico ham. And sherry, I think they're the two best things. Uh, I'm going to try one. Mm. Mm. We are together, Longer Tables. A long table makes people like you and I mm. uh, be connecting. So I was checking, obviously, details of your life. You were born in Norman, Oklahoma, but you were raised in Morgantown, West Virginia. I love Morgantown. Tell me. It's a beautiful city. Every time a, f a friend from the plaza shows up from Morgantown, we sing the fight song. It's West Virginia. It's West Virginia. The pride of every mountaineer. I mean, we know the whole thing and I have to do it. Because that's love. The word on the street is that your mom is an excellent cook and sends baklava 
randomly to the Today Show. Let me tell you something. I have distinct memories, Jose, of my mom making that baklava so meticulously with the phyllo dough and then the layer of walnuts and the honey and the butter. And that baklava represents everything to me. And I realize her language of love, Jose, has always been food. As a morning host, mm -hmm. how and when your day starts? What's going on in your life? So, Jose, I set my alarm at 3 a.m. And then until 4.15, I go through a thing in the morning where I try to ask myself, what do I need that day? And when I'm done with that, Jose, I meditate for about 20 minutes. I just sit. And when that part is over, I feel like, I'm clear and I'm awake. I mean, it's not nightlife for you. No. Jose, first of all, I have two children. One is six and one is four. I adopted them. It was the best moment in my life. But what I realized the best part about having little ones like that is everybody goes night night at the same time. I'm a morning person anyway. I love a sunrise more than I love a sunset. I love the beginnings of things. I feel like it's magical. So I want to ask you a question about raising adult kids because I've got young ones. So how do you parent your kids who are adults now? You learn as you go. I think I have a, a great relationship with my three daughters. Not like we don't have moments of, ah, yeah, we are far away from a perfect family. But we are a family that love each other. But I'm in this moment that I have a feeling I'm learning more as a grown-up and as a father and as a parent. Well, you're teaching them, obviously, to be of service by being of service yourself. The part of you that is so passionate about causes and helping, that came from somewhere. Where did that come from? Because you've dedicated a big chunk of your life. You could just be cooking in a restaurant and making a ton of money and putting your feet up, but you're not. Yeah, it's many, many reasons why, maybe. It's not just one. It's not black and white either. My mom and my dad were nurses, and, and I always saw that as people that they were always there for the people. And the same talent that I used to feed the few, I could use it to feed the many. Jose, thank you. I loved our conversation. It's so good to see you, and I'll see you soon. Until next time. Uh, I think uh, Jose may be part saint. I mean, this guy goes yeah. all over the world with his central kitchen, really does. makes hot meals for everybody. Um, he's incredible. He does it in the middle of the crisis, yeah. too. Yes. It's not like, oh, there once was something hard happening here. He was in here. Ukraine. Like, yeah. he, he goes yes. where, where, where he's needed, but he's yeah. an amazing guy. Well, if you want to hear the whole interview, that was just a taste, just an appetizer. Okay. We might say, <laughs> what is interview on Longer Tables with Jose Andres is out today. All right, we're going to keep the food theme going here. Elena Besser, she's up next. She's got this recipe for a better than takeout buffalo chicken dish that you could make for lunch or dinner today or tonight. But first, this is today on NBC. with today's table and this morning a recipe that'll save you some money on takeout 
joining us, Elena Besser, chef, host of the new Head of the Table series on Today All Day. I've caught the show, by the way. You have? It's really good. Thank it's really you. good. Uh, by the way, to cook the dish at home, scan the QR code below. It's at the bottom of your screen. You scan that QR code. You get all of the ingredients you need. We're very excited about this dish this morning because it seems like you legit could make this at home. It's you, very approachable. Oh, absolutely. All you need is a rotisserie chicken and a love for buffalo wings. And what I'd like to say is that chef, oh, I know chef. everyone's being really polite, but if you want to use your hands to eat this, oh. please feel free no to. You don't have to be cute. Yes. Okay. Be cute. So we are making buffalo chicken, buffalo rotisserie chicken okay. lettuce cup. So all the things you know and love about buffalo chicken wings in a healthy lettuce cup. So what we are doing is we're just taking a store-bought rotisserie chicken. You can just take a fork and just get your shred on. That's if it. You, That's and, just what. Exactly. And once you have that all nice and shreddy and ready to go, shreddy and ready, nice. we've got our butter melting up. For those of you that don't know, buffalo sauce is just a combination of butter. Butter, and some hot sauce. hot sauce, and if you want to feel some. extra fancy, wow. you throw in a little bit of garlic powder. Oh. So we throw that on in there. And that's it. That's literally it, okay. and it turns into oh. that luxurious, gorgeous, bright orange color. And you can, does it matter what kind of hot sauce you use? No, not at all. I mean, there are two different brands that I really love. I love Crystal and I love Frank's, but oh, um, Frank's. it really Frank's. is totally your Classic. preference. And then we're hitting it with a little salt and pepper okay. and taking that rotisserie chicken popping it in giving it a nice little warm through coating it together and you. thank you i'm sorry i gotta put you to <laughs> work right, you're standing right. here with no, me i'm so I'm sorry right. okay I'll here we go for you. thank you and then we are going to make a healthy ranch so instead of using sour cream or mayo we're using greek yogurt my good okay. pal greek yogurt um and we're just, just to make it a little healthier or? yeah just to make it a little healthier and it also adds a really nice tang it adds a nice richness and i figure you know might as well get the same experience but a little healthier what's yeah. the word over like there? It. It's, I love it's it. got a nice heat to it yeah, yeah. Good. spicy so we're adding in those chives we also have some chopped up dill we're going to add in some vinegar you can use white wine vinegar rice wine white vinegar whatever you want hit it with a little salt a little bit of pepper and then Greek yogurt, depending on the brand you use, has yep. a tendency to feel a little thick. Yeah. So in order to thin it out, you can just add a little bit of our good pal water. That's it. Yeah. Oh, exactly. good pal. It's our true. Good pal. Our good pal H2O. So we love it. We love it. So you'd add that in, give so it more of a whisk. What's the purpose of this ice water here? Okay. This is a tip. Oh, we've talked about we this. We have, and I had this to bring it back for you guys. So for people that don't love red onion and mm -hmm. the like That's intense, right. astringent onion flavor, yeah. what you can do, slice up your onions, mm -hmm. pop them into an ice bath and what that's going to do is it's going to first of all crisp up the onions but second of all pull out any of that intense astringent onion flavor. Uh -huh. It makes the onion less oniony. Exactly. Oh. More no. approachable and then you More are going to let it sit for like 10 minutes 15 dry it off and now we're over here with the rest of our veggies. And you got to pick all those onions out of the ice bath. Well though. or you could just yeah. hit I mean and then I guess it's not that hard. Okay, sorry, I'm very lazy. It's not like they're running away. Yes. We'll it's, make it work. Right or you there. can just wait. Let them yeah. Do this first. Let all the ice melt yeah. and then strain it in your sink. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then what we have is some peeled carrots. I like shredding them on a box grater. If you want, you could buy pre-shredded yeah. as well. Sure. We're making it as easy as possible. Okay, it's time to it's build time. the, Let's build the our wrap. Boats. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna take, I'm just using my clean hands here. I probably should have used Oops, those tongs, but it's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. And we are taking our buffalo chicken. Okay. We're topping it with onions, carrots, mm -hmm. celery. That's good, I think my kids would eat this actually. Mm -hmm. Oh I mean, yeah. great, that's, that's the goal, yeah, that's I what do. we want. And what did you throw the, uh, the sauce in? Okay, there? so I put the sauce in a little bag. You can put it in a zip top bag or you could spoon it over, but you know, we eat with our eyes first. We mm -hmm. want it to look as good yeah. as possible. So mm -hmm. I like taking a little baggie like and just drizzling uh, it over uh -huh. the top. You could serve it on the side as an alternative if you want. I and mean, there just the you sauce are. alone, Elena, you could, I feel like you could use that. We're going to need a bigger good, boat. right? We're yeah. going to need a bigger boat, Al. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Elena, wow. best, Elena, thank you. Guys, thank you. And the verdict? Yummy. Yeah, the I best. see. Oh, we got it. Yeah. Done. All right, well spicy. done. Thank You're not done yet. You're coming back next oh, time, Oh, I'm too. coming back. You can't get rid of me. What, so is, what are we doing next hour? Uh, next hour, we're making smash burgers. Oh, yum. Those are hot. Everybody's making those. They're all the rage. all the rage. just made one two weeks ago. I know. I'm a smash burger convert now. All right. Again, to buy all of these ingredients. 
ingredients for this particular recipe, scan that QR code at the bottom of the screen, or you could do it the old-fashioned way as well. It's today.com slash today table. We should mention today does earn a commission from purchases through our links. Third hour straight ahead, then Hoda and Jenna after that. But first, your local news, weather, and these messages. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Woo! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This morning on the third hour of today, it's the summer of sales. Prime Day, not the only way to score a hot deal. We've rounded up some of the biggest discounts on tech, appliances, and more. Plus, David Allen Greer, live in Studio 1A. Oh, I've been terrible. Thanks for asking. We hope not. He's here to fill us in on his thrilling Western series and his love of sriracha. Then it's good to be back. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? Keenan Thompson, Cal Mitchell on what to expect from Good Burger 2. The usual, the hijinks. Hijinks. Uh, you know, really, hijinks. Yeah, I have not heard the word hijinks. Come on. <laughs> Our exclusive first look at the long-awaited sequel. And then we're going to cook up some good burgers of our own. Chef Elena Besser sharing her secrets to making takeout-worthy smash burgers at home. Today, Tuesday, July 11th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third hour of today. The whole gang's here. Oh, Al, Chanel, Craig. Um, the theme of this morning, let's just call it deals. Okay. okay. Obviously, we've been talking about Prime Day. I feel like it's kicked off all these other deals that you can get at all uh -huh. different stores. It's like changing the way we shop. So have I saw you just I know, I something just, right before we started. Just bought a telescope. You got that. <laughs> And she, only, she only bought it because it was 66%. Exactly. I mean, I bought a telescope and then I bought these like fiber. That's because there's this gummies. hot guy across the street. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. I, can, like, yeah, see over she, I bought anyway. some earbuds that I had my oh, eye on okay. for 40% off. And then we're going to the beach next week. So I bought a, a nice little wireless speaker. Okay. Save 33% off that. <laughs> Very nice. I love a deal. Al? I haven't bought anything. Really? really? No. Uh, you, know, you know how much you save when you don't buy anything? <laughs> That's true. 100%. I, I really need a Vitamix. I'm like, if I'm going to oh. buy one, I should buy it right now. But it's yeah. still $300. That's a lot of money. Like, yeah, it is a lot of money. But will it bring you joy? Well, yes, because I use it. That, yeah. That's enough. Well, for a third of that, you could get a telescope. <laughs> <laughs> I can look at the sky. But you'll actually yes. use the Vitamix. <laughs> yes. We the, are uh, going to bring you some of those, uh, all those little deals yeah. that we've got going on a little bit later. But even better than something discounted, as Al just said, stuff that's free. Yeah. Today is July 11th, as you know. That's 7 11, yep. also known as Free Slurpee Ooh, Day. 7 right. 11 and Speedway uh, are giving you. them away. What so, what flavor did you go with? Oh, straight up okay. Coke. Time Blueberry. for a little. Sure. Thank you. Time Old for a little school. brain freeze. I Here we go. For these Cheers. The I went for Cheers. limoncello. Cheers. They really? used to have a green it's one. Do you guys fancy. remember the green well, one? It just seemed like a frozen lemonade. And, and to go with this, mm. what are you, Subway. Get, get a nice little sandwich? It never gets old. Subway is giving away free six inch sandwiches today. Yeah. Um, it's for one of their new hero subs, mm -hmm. I guess, with the, you know, like the fresh the sliced deli, deli meats. meats. That's right. Wait a minute. So, Subway's doing what now? They're giving away they're, free six-inch subs. To, but in it, certain locations. Yeah, There's like, some they're caveats. They're getting like a, like a million sandwiches. Okay. Yeah. 20,000 of So please sandwiches. don't walk in the Subway <laughs> like, and say, say, oh, say we're getting free subs. <laughs> right. So, no, yes. Once they run out, they run out. Check yeah, with your subs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey. All right. So we got these Slurpees. We actually should have had oh. some frosé oh, this yeah, morning because this morning we we're talking about a French wine estate <laughs> at the center of a very expensive legal battle involving Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. Yeah, that's right, the former Mr. and Mrs. Smith. NBC's Kaylee Hartung is live in Los Angeles with the latest. Hey, Kaylee. Hey, good morning, guys. Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt once called this winery their family home, but it has grown into the home of a multi-million dollar business. And now the fight over Miraval is playing out like a Hollywood drama. You still alive, baby? 
It's a new offensive in what's been called the War of the Rosé. The couple who once famously traded shots and flirtations in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. You ain't as bad as you're cooking, sweetheart. Now blasting one another in legal documents. In a cross complaint against Brad Pitt and his business partners, Angelina Jolie's company Nouvelle is accusing Pitt of acting like a petulant child. Writing the actor has been engaged in a vindictive campaign to dominate and loot the wine business that the couple had built and owned together. <laughs> the filing in response to a lawsuit Pitt brought against Jolie last year, claiming his ex-wife unlawfully sold her stake in the Thousand Acre French winery to a member of the Stoli Group Beverage Company. Pitt argued he and Jolie had a mutual and binding commitment to only sell their share of the business with the other's consent. But there's no written contract to support that, and Jolie contends she sold her shares legally. One of the reasons Jolie and Pitt haven't been able to resolve this business dispute is because they didn't seem to do enough paperwork back at the beginning. Earlier this month, a Vanity Fair article detailed how the couple once saw the estate as their family home. Jolie's team seeming to fire back in its filing, writing, the notion that Chateau Mirval was the Pitt Jolie family home died back in 2016 when Pitt terrorized his wife and children in a drunken rage while en route from the Chateau to Pitt's true home, Hollywood. The complaint also dismisses Pitt's reported hands-on involvement in the winemaking business, writing, Pitt is an actor, not a winemaker. He deals in illusions, not dirt and grapes. This is a complaint that's written a lot like a press release. It's written not just as a pleading filed in court, but as a persuasive document. The couple purchased the Provence winery in 2008 for 25 million euros, roughly $35 million at the time. According to Vanity Fair, they later partnered with the Perrin family winemaking company, creating the smash hit Mirval Rosé. Now, Jolie's team is accusing Pitt of hijacking the business and wasting the company's assets, spending millions on vanity projects, including more than $1 million on swimming pool renovations, building and rebuilding a staircase four times, and spending millions to restore a recording studio. The centuries-old estate, now the final battleground of Hollywood royalty. A spokesperson for Brad Pitt declined to comment on the new filings, but Angelina Jolie's lawyer in a new statement is claiming that she was forced to sell her shares of the business to Stoli because Brad Pitt wouldn't buy her out unless she agreed to keep silent about his violent outburst in 2016 on the couple's plane. She's clearly trying to keep a spotlight on that incident, and she also referred to it in the most recent filings, guys. Hmm. It's getting messy. It is. All right. Oh. Thank you, Kaylee. All right, Kaylee, thank you. Oh, stop it. All right. Still turning, people. turning now to another high profile show. I mean, this one is all about Twitter versus Threads. Threads is the new app from Meta, the brainchild of Mark Zuckerberg, and it has already gained, listen to this, 100 million users in less than a week. So we have NBC News technology correspondent Jacob Ward here to break down everything you need to know. Jake, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, you guys. Morning. Hi. So it's a lot like Twitter, is that fair to say? I mean, yes. It looks exactly I mean, like I was Twitter. trying to come up with a better way to say it, but talk about, you know, what is Threads and who it's for, intended for. So, uh, I mean, first of all, you were not wrong, right? Like, yeah. I think all of us, right, got in a lot of trouble in school if we copied other people's work. Mm -hmm. That does not seem to be the rules by which tech is playing right now. This is exactly like <laughs> yes. Twitter. In fact, even in the FAQs that you get when you open a Threads account, it says this is a Twitter alternative. They even wow. say it out loud. So what this is ostensibly is a way to port over your Instagram profile into a Twitter-like experience. You basically use your same credentials and they make it incredibly easy to just go right over to this new app. All of the people you followed and all the people who followed you automatically populate that and you're suddenly mm. in this Twitter-like experience, but you're listening to the fitness influencers and visual creatives oh, that you wow. used to look at photos of, but now you're looking at what they have to say They're in 500 thoughts. characters. I mean, That's full right. disclosure, I've spent the last few days kind of going down the rabbit hole of, of Thread. Oh, and Greg. I, I, I enjoy it. I, it's And maybe that's because the bots haven't shown up yet and the right. ads haven't shown up mm. and the wackadoodles from, mm -hmm. you know, they, they don't seem to have taken over. Why that. do you like that more than Instagram if it's kind of... If it's like you mean the same more thing. than Twitter? Yeah. I, I don't know. For some reason, I find it a little cleaner, and I don't find it to be as mean? hostile <laughs> yeah. just yeah. yet. Right. But to Chanel's point, if it is so obviously similar yeah. to Twitter, I mean, we know there's the pending litig litigation, what's the likelihood that... that 
Elon Musk actually has a legitimate claim here. Yeah, you know, so Elon Musk, you know, as you're pointing out here, right, it, it, he's he's upset, and his lawyers have sent threatening letters to Meta, the parent company that owns Instagram and now owns Threads, saying, you know, essentially, uh, you've stolen our idea, and we uh, may file suit against you. It's not clear yet. Is that in fact going to be uh, a way? Of, you know, is there legal standing there? And also, you know, does Elon Musk have time to fight with somebody about this as he faces all the other travails he does with Twitter? It's not clear yet, but it is a very brazen effort to take the experience people have gotten used to on Twitter and just poured it right over to Mark Zuckerberg. Which domain. is what, what, what they've done, YouTube and that has done all along. Well, and this is what all these companies do. Yeah. That's right, exactly. They copy one another's uh, or, or buy one another's right. products outright all the time. Yeah, what about so, privacy? Well, so this is a big issue, right? And and I wouldn't say, I've gone deep down a, a similar rabbit hole, in this case, looking at the, the things that Threads picks up. And I have to say, it's no different than any other major social yeah. media platform, but that's a lot, right? Anytime you sign up for Instagram or TikTok or anybody else, you're signing up for a lot. The meta privacy policy that applies to Instagram and now to Threads, you know, it picks up your location and space. Even if you've got location services turns, uh, turned off, it'll try to infer where you are based on your IP address. It's trying to grab basically everything about you they can. So it's very, very invasive but it, in theory, falls under the same kinds of standards that uh, Instagram meets. But you, but you have to admit, more than 100 million signups in five days. It's a lot. Turns out when you have 2 billion active users uh, as Instagram, <laughs> pretty easy to pick up a fraction of that in yeah. an, an overnight sign-up yeah, process. And then you have FOMO. Like, Craig was like, yeah. I did it. And we're like, okay, well, we'll I haven't done it yet, because if, if it transfers all your stuff from Instagram over, well, one what's the thoughts point? And your other, you have pictures and thoughts. Well, I, what I think is so funny is when you, get, when you look at people who've made a, a career out of being visual, Usually creative, mm -hmm. and then they gotta suddenly be funny and entertaining <laughs> like, nah, in 500 really characters. It's, yeah. It turns out yeah. they're not quite as cool that way. <laughs> it's like, no, I don't care what you think. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. All right, coming up, we've got a second helping of a comedy classic. Keenan Thompson, Kel Mitchell giving me an exclusive first look at Good Burger 2 and see what happens when I they let me take the wheel of the burger. Okay. Uh oh. Uh, and then later, deals galore. We are ringing in Prime Day by sharing some of the best sales available from Amazon and beyond. <laughs> Third hour of today, we'll be right back. I'm very excited for this. Uh, comedy classic finally getting a sequel. Kel Mitchell and Keenan Thompson are back as stars and producers of Good Burger 2. Follow up to their 1997 hit. They invited me to cruise by the set for an exclusive first look. A hot dog head rest. Yeah. I could relish that. <laughs> Come on. I'm a dude. Hey. He's a dude. Hey. She's a dude. Hey. We're all dudes. Hey. We're on a roll in the brand new Burger Mobile with all the fixings. To drive like a dream or what? And it's not just the ride that's souped up. There she is. The Burger Mobile. I've never driven a sandwich before. <laughs> Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? <laughs> The original 1997 film, Good Burger, showed high school fast food workers Ed and Dexter trying to save their local burger joint from closing. You better watch your butt, man. Okay. Now in the sequel, still starring the dynamic duo Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell, we see the buddies grown up, 26 years later, working at their old jobs. GB2, 
LGBT. Uh, we're really proud that we're making something that everybody can just gather up whoever's around and go enjoy something together. Yeah. It's just good, clean, straightforward humor. And I'm excited to see it. Everybody was waiting to see what Ed has done. <laughs> Did you ever think about Ed? <laughs> of course, you know, uh, Ed's the gift that keeps giving. When I put the wig back on and I walked by a mirror, I was like, hello, old friend. And it was like, let's do this. What do you put in that sauce? Well, you start off with a little lemon juice and some ketchup. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Never tell anyone the ingredients of your sauce. Why? You want to say a good burger, don't you? Oh, yeah, Good Burger's my life. What can you tell me about the premise of Good Burger 2 and, and the relationship between Dex and Ed? Ed owns the place now in Good Burger. Dex comes back around. They haven't seen each other in a few years, so it's some things that unravels with that. Your usual hijinks. Hijinks. Oh, yeah, really, hijinks. Yeah, I have not high, heard the word hijinks. Come on. Thank you. Again, hijinks. this is from an old guy. Thank you. A lot of horseplay happening. <laughs> The Good Burger franchise starting with Nickelodeon's 90s sketch comedy show, All That, a show these guys were cast in when they were teens. Did it take any time to fall back into the rhythm or was it just natural? For me, it, it, it was tough. It, it, it was tough for me to figure out where Dexter's coming from, where, what's been going on. Yeah, his, his story. So what's been going on with that? Uh, it's just a lot of just the personal growth, you know, life. Now, I mean, I feel like it's pretty comfortable. It's such a blessing. We're talking about years, you know, and people still love it. Like what we hear a lot of the time is like, I grew up with this movie, now I can share it with my kids. Or a parent will be like, I showed this to my kids, now they're showing it to their kids. It feels nice to be, you know, a part of that. Ah, ah. Fans will also see some other original cast members in the new film and surprise cameos yes of course a star of my stature has a custom trailer oh the moisturized powdered i'm ready for my close-up <laughs> but these two are the real reason why people are ready for another taste of good burger and in dick We've been expecting you. A lot going on here. A lot going on. Because it's a movie. You gotta do many takes. What's it like having this partnership, knowing that you can be away from each other, and then you show up on this set, and it just clicks? This is my brother right here. So refreshing. Man. Yeah. I will always remember you, Dexter Reed. I'm not going anywhere, man. Yeah. Go back to so long, bye bye. We're hitting the road. Good burgers, diners, and driving. Oh, <laughs> uh, these guys, I mean, they got this Abbott and Costello vibe going, yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. good friends. And, and it's just, it, the, the set was this relaxed, fun place. Everybody was enjoying it. Well, I think get right back in. Yes, those and we'll enjoy it. Our kids will enjoy it. Exactly. I mean, it'll come full circle. There. That's right. Yeah. Good Burger 2. And looking for it to premiere exclusively on Paramount Plus later this year.
is Prime Day. If you haven't heard, Amazon's annual shopping event, but the sales don't stop there. Now, other big chains are also slashing prices. And this morning, we have rounded up some of the hottest deals for you. So here to share them is lifestyle expert Amy E. Goodman. Amy, good morning. Amy, good, good morning. morning. Good morning, everybody. All right, let's get started. Uh, first of all, the, the ring doorbell. Yes. So at Amazon for Amazon Prime, did you know you actually do not have to be a member to take advantage of all these deals? I did not. But <laughs> Amazon Prime members get the deepest discounts. And of course, on Amazon product, including the rings, they have ring bundles up to 66% off. So here for this bundle, it's $79.99. It's 50% mm -hmm. off. So you've got the doorbell and also the ring indoor cam, which is brand new, a way to surveil inside your home Those and see so everything good. that's going. Yeah, it's good if you have pets, if you have small yes. kids, you know, if you've got some zombies wandering around, it's very <laughs> helpful. Yes. So, so what is Prime Day? Exactly? So Prime Day is actually happening from today to tomorrow, just in case if anybody hasn't heard. And there are some incredible Incredible discounts across all categories. They're also featuring small businesses as well, kind of giving them a boost. And like I said, you can actually save the most on Amazon branded products. So okay, there's a deal that doesn't suck. Well, yeah. here's the thing. No, no, it's, it's great. Um, this Amazon Prime Day has given rise to other special days. Walmart's in on it, Target's in on it, Best yes. Buy's in on it. Yes. This is a deal from Walmart specifically, right? Yes, and this is for Walmart Plus Week. It actually started yesterday. It runs through the 13th. If you are a Walmart Plus member, you've had access to these special deals mm -hmm. since yesterday through today at noon Eastern Standard Time. And then it opens up to the public. So now's your time to really get in if you're a Walmart Plus member and the public can take advantage of this. So this is incredible. It's a Dyson Omni Glide cordless vacuum. Mm -hmm. Those of us who have had cordless vacuums mm -hmm. know that they are a game changer. So I'm um, not particularly klutzy, but I'm very crumbly. I leave a yeah. lot of crumbs <laughs> underneath my underneath my table. Um, and this deal is fabulous. It's brand new, by the way. So oh. it's $199.99, oh. normally $349.99. Oh, wow. So wow. I love to bring you new products <laughs> that are on sale, oh. that are also exclusives with Walmart and Dyson. It's kind of a triple header there. This win, is win, a win. very, very unique hmm. opportunity. I like the size of yes. it, too. Um, let's head over to Target now. What do they have Yeah, so on? it is Target Circle Week, which started on Sunday and extends through this Saturday. And you actually have to be a Target Circle member to participate and take advantage do of all these, these deals. memberships cost money? Target so this is free. Sign up. This one is free. Target so is just okay. sign up and you can take advantage of these great deals. Mm. Um, up to 50% off on Target branded um, items. And then we have some other brands that we know. So this is the Lenovo 15.6 inch touchscreen laptop. Oh. So it's a great deal if you want to start thinking about maybe upgrading your laptop or mm. getting ready for back to school. I hate to say that <laughs> out loud. But yeah. you're going to save $350 on this. The landing price is $389.99. Okay. And the Keurig K it's Mini. color. I love the color. I love how compact it is. Great for all of your hot beverages from cocoa <laughs> to tea to coffee. I know it's, but the color really sells it, right? Yeah. It's so nice. It so this is actually $59.99. You're going to save $30. It's normally $89.99. So if you're thinking mm -hmm. about these little mini upgrades, mm -hmm. now's a good time to refresh. Yes. And like you said, you know, everybody wants to get everybody in store right. and online and sure. taking advantage of these sales at a time normally in summer when sales are kind of slow. When so you get in store, you tend to buy more. Yes, yes. In, <laughs> yes. in store is Let's fun. Talk about this air fryer. Yeah, here. this is from Home Depot. So okay. Home Depot has sales from today through tomorrow and rolling sales. Mm -hmm. So today is actually up to 45% off power tools. Mm -hmm. um, and tomorrow, which features this also includes small appliances and vacuums particularly okay. up to 40% off they say but this is actually 53% off again on sale tomorrow it's their Aria air fryer mm -hmm. it holds 10 quarts you'll notice it has these one. various kind of shelves inside yeah. Yeah. so you can cook multiple things at once oh. on individual trays as opposed to my air fryer where you it's only one basket you one can and I throw it all one and this has a rotisserie yeah, it's like a roller cool. for your fries so oh. you don't have to go and cool. shake every That's so right. often mm -hmm. yeah so it's $79.99 you could also play okay. bingo in there too. Well, yes, <laughs> with some heat. Yes, what are other companies offering? Yeah, so Best Buy has a great um, membership program. They've got two different loyalty programs. Mm -hmm. It's best to be one of those members to maximize your savings. Also, Kohl's up to 60% off Not home, bad. clothing, toys, and everything That's else. That's every day at Kohl's. And, and, and Jason <laughs> Petty also 20% um, off uh, in their stores and 30% off online. So there's everybody Thank wants you, you to go have some fun. Everybody wants shop to shop. 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 Right. And to see our live coverage Thank with even you. more deals, you can shop right now. Just head to today.com slash summer savings. We have it all there this morning. When we come back, look who's here. Oh, yeah. David Allen Greer's yeah. in the house. We're going to hear all about his latest project. It's, uh, it's set out west, 
And we're also going to get his hot take on Sriracha. Oh. Well. He's also got a hot take on Smash Burger. Oh. <laughs> and then later, the best of the best. Don't encourage him. The best of the best at home and around the world. The stunning places that won Travel and Leisure's World's Best Awards. We're going to reveal them exclusively when we come right back. Entertaining us for decades, David Allen Greer, or David, David the, Allen Greer, <laughs> burst onto the scene in the 1990s sketch comedy series in Living Color. Well, he went on to star in projects like the original Jumanji and most recently, The Patient, alongside Steve Carell. And in 2021, David won his first Tony Award for his role in a soldier's play, the same production he was originally cast in back in 1981. Well, now David is back. Season two of Joe Pickett it's on Paramount Plus. He plays a corrupt former game warden in Wyoming who ends up in I've prison. I've been in H-Pod more times than I can count. I heard you took in that Keeley girl. Glad to hear it. How her mother could run off like that. After y'all killed her husband. Is that what you mean? I'm not going to tell you again. I didn't have anything to do with that. Right. Well, things just got out of hand. Had I known what a loose cannon waste it was. I'm here to talk about Randy Pope. Well, we both are, Joe. You first. Oh. Mm. Well done. The mm. always colorful David <laughs> Allen Gray. Always color into it. Always <laughs> colorful. <'Cause laughs> we all been a man. I, I come no, to you I, on I, your I beautiful come here that jacket to discuss race, sir. <laughs> You're a mess. <laughs> I complimented you on your beautiful bespoke jacket. Thank you, gray man. Uh, Thank let's, you. Talk, <laughs> let's talk about color. Let's, let's talk about Vern <laughs> before we go off the rails. <laughs> Too late. Let's talk about Vern. Is, the, is, the, let's, is this program in color? <laughs> In living color. It's in living it's color. In living color. Wait, that's not you, man. This is monochromatic day. I go monochromatic. And you have a wedding ring on. I do. Wait, you dress like my that. wife has already asked me about my outfit. Oh, you know what? We what color gray, honey, are we... you wearing today? <laughs> is it dark gray, medium gray, or gray gray? You know what? We did not invite David Allen Greer to come on. <laughs> And, and climb I like by, it though. And I, t- fashion. I totally agree. We're here for it. Yeah. Let's talk you know about Craig. Craig. You know what Craig means? What? It mean? well, it's translated as gray. <laughs> Actually, actually means mountain. Oh, so look at you. Right. Okay, Craig. Craig. Gray Mountain. Yes. Have you been up the Craig let's, lately? Let's talk about Joe Pickett. Okay, okay, tell okay. Me, tell me about Vern. Because, well, no, no, wait a minute. You were approached to play him, and it hadn't even been written yet, right? No, no. It was in the middle of the pandemic. It's amazing. And the Dowdles, who are uh, uh, creators, not the creators. It was, it's based on a C.J. Box uh, series mm-hmm. of novels. But this character, they pitched me over Zoom. And, um, but the character sounded so enticing. Oh. A corrupt former warden in the middle of Wyoming. Yeah. Um, kind of the midnight mayor. Everybody knows him. But, you know, corruption and evil is not, yeah. mm. you got to be slicker than that. Yeah. So, uh, but it was really an act of faith. Uh, they sent me other scripts. Yeah. But once I got there, the writing just got richer and richer. And they would come every day. They said, well, can we write more? I was like, yeah, man. Because I'm used to going, look, you're so good. We don't need all the words. We'll just cut to you. Yeah, we'll just cut to you. To that point, I mean, you were supposed to be killed off at the end of season one. It's got to feel good that they're like, 
ah, can we bring you back? Yes, it was the first time ever. Usually they're like, <laughs> we'll kill you off early. Because <laughs> we're trying to get you out of here. So uh, it was great. And we'll yeah. see what happens from here. We'll see what happens uh, when and if there's a next season. You know? We'll see, man. But I've had a ball so far. And I know one of the things you were so passionate about. I mean, you really pitched to be in this remake of Color Purple. Yes. Uh, you know, it comes again yes. in December. It's Steven Spielberg, Oprah, yes. executive producing it. Absolutely. Uh, and you actually auditioned for the original in 85. I did. I auditioned for Harpo. And at the time, oh. I thought, oh, here's what happened. I thought, this is the last role uh -huh. in the last movie that's going to be for me. You know, when you're young, you think that, yes, of course, you think every role, there'll never be a role like this, no, there'll never really? be a movie like this, and, and I got to get it. So when I didn't get it, I was devastated, mm. and I just thought, man, but life is funny. Look at that. Life is funny. It came you're all back. the way back that. around. I love that. Do you, feel, do you feel better prepared for it now? There. Right? Um, different. You know, it's not Harpo. I'm not, I'm not playing that role, yeah. but I just feel within myself, I'm older, mm -hmm. I'm wiser, I'm more comfortable. In myself, you know, I can wear what I want. I'm not gray. Yeah, right. <laughs> you're you're not. Not. Your taste you know aren't. Your I taste can do what so I colorful. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 look at that. Ah, hey, I, how about that. how about your sriracha? Yeah, what's Speaking up with not the colorful. sriracha situation? Listen, <laughs> you make your own, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. Uh, there's a sriracha shortage. That's right. my Is house. Is there still a shortage? I think it's engineered, man. Oh. You think it's engineered? But listen, I can't, you got to pay $150 million for a bottle Wait, of sriracha. Wait, is this your sriracha? This is my custom Wait, made like, how do you, sriracha. How do you make sriracha. You, you take first. peppers, yeah. a little, sh little yeah, cane see. sugar, salt, and just, vinegar, yeah. special peppers. Ooh, it's got a right. kick, kick spicy? to it. Mm. Yes, ma'am. That's why it's called hot sauce. <laughs> This I is the sweet it. heat. Listen, is it mm -hmm. that's good. Sweet heat, baby. Good mm. Mm. Wow. I'm gonna tell oh, you, you better not eat this, Craig. That might bring a little color to you your You know what I'm saying? Joe oh, Pickett, season good. two, streaming now. Paramount that bottle's worth $1,500, mm. y'all. Right mm. It's spicy, but just the right amount of spice. There you go. Mm. Yeah. There you go. Mm. That's good. Austin, awesome. yeah. we talked about how much. We're revealing the winners of Travel and Leisure's World's Best Awards from charming cities to island escapes. Yum. You can plan that next vacation. Right. Right. Third hour today. Yeah. I'll be right back. No, it's good because we went back for another day. Oh, oh yeah. Hey, man. It's never too early to start dreaming of your next vacation. And this morning, we are revealing Travel and Leisure's annual World's Best Awards, highlighting the best of the best in the travel industry. And editor-in-chief Jackie Gifford is here to exclusively share some of this year's top winners. Jackie, good Jackie, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good Great to see you. To see you. So how, how do you come up with all of, you know, the, the best of the best? Who are you? Pulling? All readers, voted by readers. So we rank a ton of different things, whether it's hotels, cities, cruise lines, destinations. 
And these are some of the best in the world right now. So okay. number one is? Number one, right here in the United States, the top city in the U.S. is Charleston, mm. South Carolina. Oh. They have yeah. won 11 years been. in I've a row. Been. God's country. Been? God's you? country. Okay. Well, I have to be honest. With the, the best thing about Charleston, it's easy to get to. It's walkable. The locals are super friendly. So much historic architecture and food. Great restaurants like Zero Restaurant, Craft Wine Shop, Leon's. Just really cool, small local businesses, too. Great shopping. You can go to a place like the Tiny Tassel for clothes and jewelry. Also, the International African American Museum just opened. Mm. So mm. there's they're constantly innovating and changing while still staying true to their to their roots. Okay. Wow. Okay. Now, international city. Yes. Oaxaca won for the best oh. international city. So Mexico. Mexico, easy to get to. But I think people again are going because of the the history, the culture, the local crafts markets, the food. You can get dishes that combine the indigenous culture with the Spanish influence. There's also this amazing site nearby, UNESCO World Heritage Site called Monte Alban, which are these historic pyramids with beautiful intricate mm -hmm. stone carving. So again, I think people are really resonating with places that they really are enjoying places with culture. Let's talk about an island getaway. Islands. Where should we go? Okay, <laughs> well here in the U.S., the number one island destination in the continental U.S. is the are the barrier islands, Georgia's Golden Isle. So oh. people really love this. It's very family friendly. It's right mm. between Savannah and Jacksonville, Florida. You've got so many beautiful things to do: marshland, nature trails, cool. golf courses. Cool. You know, places like Jekyll Island, St. Simons Island, Little St. Simons, and Sea Island. These are really known as family friendly destinations. Also, May through October is the sea turtle nesting season, mm. so people oh. like to. Go Go out during the day and see the sea turtles. You can follow their tracks and the, the sea turtle center. You can do an evening tour and see them at for like about twenty seven dollars. So that looks also beautiful. really affordable. That looks so relaxing. What about best island in the world? What do you I think this is one of the world's. Uh, Period, hands down, greatest destinations, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Oh. So Australia oh, is back open again. <laughs> People are really eager to go back and see. You can actually see the Great Barrier Reef from space. I don't know if you wow. can see the yeah. whole system. Mm -hmm. And over time, you know, people, the different tourism providers are really working to make it more sustainable. There's over 100 islands in the group. People really called out the Whitsundays and Lizard Island, which is mm. a beautiful, beautiful resort. Mm. Um, obviously, this is a one-of-a-kind view, but there are other places that are known for having a one-of-a-kind view. Yes, so we introduced a new category this year, train travel, oh. the Rocky Mountaineer one. So I think this is really cool. People are into train travel, yeah. sustainable. Yeah. You can see a lot of places in one go. So the Rocky Mountaineer, they do trips that go from Denver to Moab and Utah, and then also wow. in Western Canada from Vancouver to some of the Canadian Rockies towns. And you get to sit in these glass dome carriages mm. and take oh, in these beautiful views. You mm. sleep off of the train at night, and then during the day, you get to see all these magnificent places. Unbelievable. Wow. That's a great concept. No I've traffic. never done one of those. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, I, I, I love train travel. But the, the national parks, one of our great jewels in this country, Yosemite. Yes, mm -hmm. Yosemite. So, so 63 national parks here in the mm -hmm. U.S. and people have been, you know, really eager had, to see them. I and meant yeah, Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Yeah. Yellowstone won this year. They won three years in a row. It occupies 3,500 square miles, wow. really, the northwest corner of Wyoming into yeah. Idaho and Montana. You obviously, get to see the Grand Prismatic Spring, Old Faithful. I did this last year, uh -huh. driving in from Montana for a day trip, and it was one of the top things I think I've ever done. As really? A traveler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you get to see the wildlife, you know, it's just moose, so beautiful. Yeah. You know, elk, bison, all these amazing, amazing animals, and you just never really appreciate what we have in our own backyard. And there's so many national parks yeah. that you don't have to go to the, the yeah. ones that everybody knows that, to give them a little bit of break and go see some Absolutely. others, too. But Absolutely. make a reservation, too, right? Because yes, if you want to stay in, if you want to stay, obviously, inside, yeah. And there's campgrounds and mm -hmm. hotels nearby, but I think, really, we should appreciate our national parks a little bit more and take better care of them. Absolutely. Jackie, this is great. Thank you, Thank you so much. You. Jackie. Makes us want to travel. To see more winners from Travel and Leisure's World's Best Awards, head to today.com. All right, well, coming up, how to make dinner a smashing success. We're going to share the secrets to a burger that is better than takeout Third hour of today, I'll be right back.
are back with today's table and our friend Chef Elena Besser is here. She, of course, hosts the new series, Head of the Table, on Today All Day. It is terrific. The latest episode is premiering today, highlighting groundbreaking women in the seafood industry. Oh. So tell us about this, Elena. Okay, it was the coolest thing I have ever done in my career to <laughs> wow. you guys. We were in Rockport, Maine, hanging out with lobster fishermen, with oyster farmers, and then we went over to Washington State to hang out with a wow. woman who's in the Quinault tribe and went fishing with her. You said wow. we went over to Washington State like yeah, like, like yeah. borders yeah. made. Yeah. I just popped on over to yeah. the other end of America. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't have lobster today, but we are talking about the Smash, Smash Burger. Burger. Yes. And, and this is something that you, we can make. All you got to do is scan the QR code. You'll get all of the ingredients. So how do we get started? Okay, it is very simple. We are starting with our special sauce. Ah, so okay. I, we're making it a little healthier here. We're adding Greek yogurt. I know I, I talked that. about no, that earlier, but that. it's what it's all about. So we're adding some ketchup in. We are adding in some relish. Should you could do use sweet or standard relish. Mm -hmm. I like a little bit of sweet relish yeah. in there, though, a little extra sweetness. We have a garlic. clove of garlic that's grated, and then some good old-fashioned yellow mustard. Oh, yellow. You're team, going to... Craig. We should Look cook more us. often. Yeah. We should. Yeah. Cooking with Craig. So you're going to whisk that up. Craig. So you're going to whisk it up, hit okay. it with a little salt and pepper. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to take a white onion. Mm -hmm. And there's this place in New York called 7th Street Burger that does white onions in their smash burgers. Oh. And it just gives you a little extra insurance when you are smashing down your burger so mm -hmm. that it doesn't, the spatula doesn't stick. So it's not I a lot of idea. meat for each burger. It isn't. It's only about two to three ounces of meat for each burger. We're going to hit the tops with a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to take the salt side and you're going to take some onion we can't forget the onion no. pop that on top and then oh, smash gosh. it down if you want to take it a step further it oh, is yeah. prime day so buy yourself a little anyone. press and oh. this is so just going to go. that's intuitive because on a grill you wouldn't do that. Right, because that, that would push out all the meat. Right. right. The juice. It would, but here it's all about getting a crust. So we want a really nice surface area mm -hmm. coverage so we get that heat and we get a nice crispy and crust. And they cook quicker. Wait, they Craig, do. What's wrong? It we're, only... Where's the bun? It, oh, we're, okay, we're making it protein okay. style. Okay. We're, we're not... We're not ignore, ignore If you ignore, want a bun, ignore, put a bun on it. Ignore, I'm sorry. Ignore, I'm sorry. Ignore, sorry. I'm so, okay, okay. So we're talking about the burger still. Just do like us. So this only needs like a minute and then the next thing you know you're going to just take it and flip oh, it and look at it that, that crust. Crust. crust what kind of Ooh, what is it i guess it's, a, nice. it's like you yeah more fat. You know that's what fat. i was going to ask uh -huh. no i'm asking what do you do i like more fat because the fat is what gives you the maillard reaction which is a fancy term for golden brown so which gives you the crisp yeah. i'm a big 80 20 girl okay. Okay. You go. i was like i already know i, I got no, no, no. so yeah. now you're the best part about this is letting the cheese melt exactly so what we're going to do is we turned this off earlier because we didn't want the oil popping everywhere but what you're going to do is you're going to pop. Um, it could be American cheddar, your favorite type of cheese. You're going to take it. You'll take that other burger, put it on top, uh, oh and the heat is going to give you the meltification that we want. The meltification. It's all about like the meltification. The meltification. Do you even need a bun? And then no. if you want a bun, great. If not, that's fine, too. What I like don't to do. You don't need the bun. Oh, thank well, this you, is like a pro, It's like a, pro, a protein style. It's guy. protein style, Al. Yeah. You get it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take it. I like to add a little bit of oh, tomato because wow. tis the season yes. we're slicing it oh we are gonna hit that with more salt this put the heirloom amazing. on take oh, your wow. special sauce pop that on there like and then without the bun. give it oh a little gosh. folderoo you know what it. you get to actually taste the, taste the meat yeah you can taste the meat and, and then the you know what you can go back and you can have a whole nother burger because you didn't have this the is delicious. am i right mm. and this sauce is delicious oh i'm well. happy with like greek it. yogurt yeah. Right? An Who unexpected knew? twist. This is almost Fantastic. healthy. <laughs> Elena, thank you so much. Thank this you, is friends. free range Craig yeah, moving around. Yeah. A little bit more Yeah, yeah it's you all can, about the sauce. You can buy all of the ingredients for this recipe oh, and maybe Craig <laughs> by scanning the QR code. <laughs> Please buy Craig or head to today.com slash table. Oh my god. Oh that is look good. at that. We should it's mention today gone. earns a commission from purchases through QR codes or links on today.com. And I wasn't going to eat the whole thing. But. It's delicious. <laughs> but now you have to. Yep. It's worth it. Turn this off. And catch Elena on a brand new episode of Head of the Table today at 1030 and 9 p.m. on our streaming channel Today All Day. Al says it's fantastic. We have to mm -hmm. check it out. Just like this burger. This is fantastic. We'll be right back. Mm. Elena, this is delicious. I know we're all finishing. <laughs> Thank you.
Tomorrow, the third hour of today, Olympic legend Sean White. I never eaten studio. burgers. Hey, coming up on Hoda and Jenna, the newest stars of The Real Housewives of New York. We will see you tomorrow. You your burgers, didn't you? Bye-bye. We did. Oh, They're gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> you never see that happen. No, it was, I'm going on a diet right now. Stop. newest Real Housewives of New York, Jenna Lyons and Cy De Silva. Plus, we'll show you some home decor shortcuts with interior designer Mikkel Welch. And Ken can sing. Ryan Gosling shows off his vocal skills once again, this time in the new Barbie movie. We've got a sneak peek. So it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. So good. It's Tuesday. It is July the 11th. Hello. And it is Prime Day. Everybody's talking about it. Oh, they sure are. Everybody is shopping. I, I FaceTime my mom this morning and I go, Mom, it's Prime Day. <gasps> what should we get? I go, I don't know. Go look. So all you do is you look on Amazon and hit the hit the prime, hit the sales button. And it says what's best? Let me tell you something that is on there, okay? What? If you ever needed a speaker for the beach. Yeah. Clickety clack. So you've like, already. I got, I got speaker, a speaker for the beach. They're little tiny and they're so and cute. And they're waterproof? So I, got two. I don't know. And then, oh. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then. Wow, which is one of the great hair products to get rid of frizz, is never on sale, ever. Guess what? I was like, is that wow? And I think it was 40% Whoa. wow. Wow. Wait, wow. Yes. Um, yes. What I'm just loving yes. about you is that you're not a shopper. I don't like shopping. I'm actually confused by who this person is. <laughs> I do not like shopping, however. I like things like products and speakers and things. Gadgets. I don't like shopping for clothes or shoes or anything. I don't yeah, like that. You I should have, like you know that. what, I need, I, I'm going to go look. Go look, because Bruce. why not? And they're on it's sale. It's two days, too, so guess what you can do, because this is what we usually say to do. You, I think it's two days. I'm giving it. Yeah, advice. 11th and 12th. You yeah. can put it in your basket. This is oh, what I no, always no, do. Now you're, Henry's you like, don't do this. You say you do it, but I, you don't. I don't buy things right away. I really Wait, don't. You really put something because in things, your Amazon basket and wait yeah, a day. Yeah, I can show you. My okay, phone's well, right here. Well. But if somebody would like to bring it to you, I have so much in my basket. And Henry's like, "Are we getting a new?" And I'm like, "Well, I was just thinking about it." So you put it in there and then you delete it or hit the button. Yeah, or I never order it. Or you never order it. Yeah. What What's on your list? Anything? Well, I want? need like a wine fridge. Okay. See, I need things that aren't that much fun to buy. Yeah, they're and not. And also, fun. they're on sale, but are they really that much off? 19% or 20% no, off. Yes, but the but Amazon Prime, things are, are way discounted. They're like 40 and 50% I off. I need a new washer and dryer. Oh, no. You, no, that's, <laughs> that's that's too big. What no, happened? I What's agree. What's wrong with yours? It, well, it's old. Makes a lot of noise. It did, not that it makes a lot of noise. It just My. breaks. <laughs> it's fully broken. Um, anyway, we'll see. But good. I'm glad. I'm really love to see that you're really embracing Prime Day. I'm I'm kind of I don't know who you it. are. I'm kind of into it. 
All right, so Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, um, they've been in the headlines lately over a divorce. It's making headlines. They're fighting over this French wine estate. <laughs> they call it, it's called Chateau Mirival. You've, you've seen that bottle, their bottle. Of rosé. Of rosé, you've probably had some. They keep calling it War of the Rosé. What is it, rosé? Ro remember War, War of, of the, the Roses. roses. Uh, I got it. Anyway, <laughs> okay. so they split a long time ago. 2016, after just two years they of marriage. They were only married for two years? Together longer. Okay. okay. Here's the thing about, because, you know, er, sometimes people will look at that story and say, wow, these are, you know, very wealthy people fighting over a vineyard. Who cares? You know, yeah. not who cares, like, but it's like, just not related. okay, we yeah. don't understand. Yeah. But I think when it comes to any relationship or divorce, I think a lot of, since half the country has gone through a divorce, I think half the country understands what it is to... Uh, you have those those kind of those anger those yeah. angry feelings and also you're fighting over so whatever it is yeah whether it is the kids. some furniture yeah. or a car yeah. or the kids you know but all the no but all the yeah. things and just how vindictive and mean people can get yeah. in that kind of situation and also you know the the process of going through a divorce is tough but i think Someone, you know, gave some good advice, and he said sometimes there's a price for freedom. Yeah. Freedom and peace of mind. Yes. To not have to be fighting or thinking about it, for it not to be the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning, like something that's bothering you. Yeah. Like yes. You're getting it, you're in the in the dirt and in the mud fighting over. I know, isn't it interesting that at some point, and you have to put your pride aside? Yeah. And for, just be for like, your freedom. fine. Fine. What does it take? Yeah, and peace of mind matters. Yeah. Like, you can you can fight and fight. And sometimes at the end, I mean, I'm not saying this for them because they've got their own deal, but people are fighting over stale bread. No, it's I like, know. Who cares? We don't even, uh, it's over this chair. We're going to get into a knife fight over this silly chair, but it and can And in the get, end, it doesn't even end, matter, but it poisons cares? your life. Right. The other thing is life is so short. Yes. Freedom. Do you want to spend it fighting? No, we don't. I don't. No. no. So anyway, we anyway, hope give they resolve the rosé away. Yeah, we hope they resolve it. Just <laughs> get sure another do. vineyard. Yeah. You got the you got money? Buy another one and don't worry about the other one. I mean, give that Roll vineyard with it. To that? Roll and take this with vineyard it. with that. <laughs> Wow. I think you have a lot of resources. Maybe just figure it out. Yeah. Okay. But anyway. And also so that your kids don't have to hear it over and over and over yes. again. And yes. that and that's for any relationship. Yes. Yes. Anyone. Okay. So there's an article. It caught our attention. It sure did. Because mm -hmm. it says that Gen Zers fear awkward phone calls. It's as an aversion. It's yeah. like a real thing. Like they, they compare it to heights, the fear of heights. Like the phone ringing. It's like, uh-uh. The crocodiles? That's what they say. That they're as scared of phones as they are of crocodiles. So if the phone rings and you have to say hello, you know what? I, th I thought they didn't like it because they felt like it was just a pain. They're not interested in a phone call. They'd just rather, why not text? Why are you calling? Well, exactly. Me? That they that everybody thinks that texting or emailing is more efficient, but it's not. It's not. No. Also, sometimes you need an intrusion, a call. Like a text you can say, I didn't see it. Or sometimes you need the person to dial your but number. But I will and say. What? I will say this. Henry was calling people and leaving messages. And he's like, they're not getting back to me. And I'm like, honey, nobody, nobody listens, listens to voicemail right. anymore. Nobody you, does. If you want a I response, agree. you've got to just text. Yes. You either text or you get an answer on the phone Yes. Call. But yeah. if nobody's answering, no, no, no. then you have to move How to text. How many voicemails are on your phone right now? I, my think? phone is up, don't upstairs. Know. I, you have, do you have mine, too? Oh, y'all brought my phone? Do you have mine? Yeah, yeah Julia has your phone. Julia, do you have, do you have mine, Julia? <laughs> well, Before you fine. go get it, thank you, Julia. Okay, it's Julia's see... one-year anniversary. Happy anniversary, Julia. <laughs> okay, can I see your phone? Yes. I just want to see how many voicemails. Now, I don't want to see all your texts. Okay. That's a lot. Where's your voicemail? God, how do your I... phone is very unorganized. You know what? <laughs> First of all, let me just say something. Because you don't even have your phone dialed thing on the on the home screen, I don't. That, which means you never make call. Where's your phone? I don't know. No, it's not even on here. Wait, where did your there? Right Look where there. it is. No, it's buried in one of those. I, it's because I don't really care. No, you do care. You just oh wait. You're on my Instagram. Sorry, hold on. This is not <laughs> working. How do you? You're reading my email. No, I'm not. Okay, here you have three. 
Okay. Wait, don't just play I'm it. I'm not just going to play them, but you have three voicemails. Here who they're from. Okay. She called you yesterday, 56 seconds. Okay. She called you <laughs> a couple of days ago, and someone from Stanford called you for 12 seconds. Okay. God, Laird leaves a lot of voicemails. <laughs> Love you, Laird. Laird leaves. But you've got to listen to those voicemails. Well, what about your phone? I'd well, like to see Julia, yours because you've just happy judged your mine. Your anniversary is not here yet. Okay. Okay. I don't think she ran to get your phone. Is somebody uh, bringing it down? No, I don't think. Okay. No, it's um, okay. All right. Well, no, I'd like to see. It's fine. Um, all right. All right. Well, in case you haven't heard, y'all, <laughs> you're on point for Barbie. Oh, I am. You're right, you're right, you're right. Okay. Barbie's coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so there's a new clip out, and this surprised some people because it's a musical clip. And if you're wondering who's singing in this musical clip, it is Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Take a look. I'm just Ken. I'm just Ken. Oh Mila told me what the Barbie movie was about. I don't know how she knew, but it's like, it's kind of a feminist anthem. Huh? Yes. And I asked her, it's about in the world of Barbie, Barbie is the queen, and then she comes to the real world and she finds out that She's the future not. ain't exactly female like they promised oh. us. Oh. I know, so I asked Mila if she Wait, thought that was what? true in the real world, and she goes, I don't really know. By the way, so that's why he's just kin. He's just Barbie Ken. world. Nobody cares about. Well, Ken. here's the funny thing. A lot of people are like, "Wait, Ryan Gosling sings." You know what, guys? Ryan Gosling does sing, and he's been doing it a long time. We had to do a little digging, and we you'll you'll notice this clip that we're about to show you. How about Justin Timberlake along with the young Ryan in the Mickey Mouse Club performing with Joe to see? Take a look. <laughs> I just realized what one of my favorite things is. What? Young boys singing love That's songs. Awesome. They're like, you baby at the mall. There's something so good. Remember when we had that band on? Yes. And they sang that song. Yeah. What was that song? For it was in my Menudo. head for weeks. Menudo. And they were like, <laughs> we love you, baby. And they're like 12. And it's oh awesome. Oh, my God. By the way, that was a young Justin Timberlake, a young J.C. Chazé, too. Uh, look at this group. Oh, my gosh. And a little young Ryan Gosling oh, singing to his fourth grade girlfriend. There's nothing better. <laughs> so cute. I love it. Coming up next, y'all, two of TV's most Stylish new stars. Jenna Lyons and Saida Silva on joining the cast of The Real Housewives of New York City coming up right after this.
right, Housewives fans, get ready. After 13 seasons of drama in the Big Apple with a rotating lineup of leading ladies, the franchise is coming back this weekend. Brand new cast of stylish and successful women. Yeah, and we've got two of them right here. Former J. Crew president and entrepreneur Jenna Lyons and fashion influencer Saida Silva and hot off the press, a new season means new taglines. Mm. Take a look. <laughs> My lashes may be fake, but I definitely keep it real. In New York, there's a lot of bad apples, but I'm the baddest of the bunch. Oh! <laughs> you came up with some doozies, ladies! Wait, how did y'all come up with yeah. your taglines? I mean, I think both of us did the same thing. We reached out to everyone who follows us and said, help, because I was completely stumped. <laughs> yeah. The number of people who wrote in, it was kind Was of, it close when you were picking yours? It was, well, I really wanted one that talked about lashes. It's important yes. for me with my business. And, you know, I think that uh, there were some of the ones that people sent in were... Hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. Things I would never say. Oh. Yeah. But it was fun. There was a lot of good ones. Yeah, it? I did the same thing. I just reached out to my followers, and there were hundreds to choose from. It was overwhelming. It's such a brilliant idea. Yeah. You guys have shot already, right? So yes. you've shot your season. First of all, I'm going to ask you the first question. Are you still friends? Let's <laughs> yes. begin there. Yes, yes, we are still you friends. You are still friends? Surprising. We actually have, like, I think out of anyone, we didn't actually cross as much yeah. as some of the other girls did. Cross yeah. meaning, like, fight. Let's get into it. We're used to, yeah. there were no nails, there was no biting and scratching. There was yeah. no but tension, there was definitely, really. Yeah. I don't think there was a lot of tension. I think I probably poked her a little bit. But other it's than that, is that your personality? Like, because I was thinking about what that may, may be like, because you want you need conflict, you know, for stories. But is that would did that come naturally to you? Um, I think I'm just nosy and just it was like all in Jenna's business, <laughs> yeah. basically. So I wanted her to open up to me a little bit more. Uh -huh. So that's was how that, that and what I think, you know, I know you a little. I've known you for a long time. And I mean, even the New York Times wrote an article and they were like shocked that you would do this. Yeah, I think because you aren't. Somebody that, in my opinion, that wants to fight, you yeah. know? I yeah. don't, well, I think there's a couple of things. First of all, I think that everything that we talked about when we signed on to do this was that they were looking to actually do something slightly different. So this was not about mirroring what had already been mm -hmm. done. Yeah. This was about trying to show a different part of New York and show women who brought something different to the table. So this is not about like, copying or carbon copying what has already been done. Yeah. Okay. And so, and it's also like we're getting to know each other even more deeply. We knew each other. I used to see Sai at shows all the time. Yeah. But I don't know. There's something about this that felt like we were trying to create something new. I like that. I do too. Sai, what, what did you get from the show? You know, I think I, I mean, I got five new best friends. I didn't yeah. even know I was looking for best friends and here they are. <laughs> um, but I think for me, I'm also someone who just go, go, go. And I, I don't really share a lot of emotion. Oh, that's and then, interesting. So spending time with five other women, I think I had to open up a little bit and more. Was that hard? Or that was you? very hard for me. I'm not a very vulnerable uh, person uh, or individual, but um, I can, I can. And yeah, that was can. the same with you. <laughs> I feel like that. I, as soon as it started to peel away, I was like, "Who are you?" Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. I, mean, I had my moment. But I think there's something about that because I think a lot of people put all their stuff out for the world to see, and there's something that makes you lean into somebody who's saying, "Not so fast." Yeah. How did you decide, Sai, who to let in and who in, in your family, in your circle, who would appear on the show and who wouldn't? I think it was a it was a choice by the whole family. First yeah. of all, my daughter is 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 using me basically. She's <laughs> like, "Do you think this is going to catapult my acting career?" <laughs> I was like, "I had no idea that you have an acting career." I'm not sure, <laughs> you know. And, and what um, about your husband? Because yeah. you, you you have chosen not yeah. to show him on social media before. Yeah, this is going to be a big deal. He's he's everyone's going to see him. Wow. Yeah. And he's it's, okay with that? He's okay with it. It's going to be great. But you know what? He's not on social media. Okay. So yeah. he has no idea what people are saying, what anyone is discussing. Yeah. You know, he's just showing his face. He's showing support for his wife. Yeah. And, you know, that's it. It's, you know, it's interesting because as we talked about sort of the history of the franchise, it has in history, broken up relationships. Yeah. I mean, we just saw that Kyle Richards and her husband are possibly divorcing. Mm -hmm. Did that worry you? I mean, I think... Listen, there's no question you're taking, we're taking a risk. Like we're putting ourselves in unusual situations and with a lot of scrutiny and a lot of people who have an opinion about what we're doing. So yeah, there's obviously a risk, but I think foundationally, like I have seen Sai and her husband and like there's such a strong foundation and I've been all over the place on the show. Yeah. I'm not as at risk, but I think, you know, we all like went into it eyes wide open. And I think, you know, there is some fear, obviously, like what people are gonna say. People are 
I've had some doozies already. I'm going to do a collection of like best and worst comments because man, I think that's going to be funny. People have some interesting. Well, do you guys have? Do you have? You must have like a thick, thick skin. skin. Well, I was going to say, don't to. read it. Well, I think the, one of the things that I found is if you actually read some of the best and the worst and you pair them together, you realize like these people don't know you. Yeah, totally. So they don't. The, the person who says you're amazing. I'm really not that great. And yeah. the person who says I'm really an asshole, I'm really not that much yeah. of an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> there is, you know, they don't know us yet. And I think um, it's like, hopefully they'll get to know us a little yeah, bit Yeah, it's more. like tr trying to find the people that do know you. Yeah. Like, that's that's what's most important, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've cultivated an audience of people who have gotten to know me over the years, YouTube videos, et cetera. So, like, that's my core audience. Yeah. And, you know, they know me. I feel like I have a little beehive almost. Yeah. yeah. So maybe they'll attack the bad oh. comments. A baby oh, that's And I can, like, you know, sit yeah. back You're and just like, relax. Yeah, you yeah. All right, yeah. you guys are going to stick around, okay? Because yes, you're going to okay. share a few of your favorite fashion trends, things you guys cannot live without. All right, we'll see you right after the break. Okay. Awesome. Long before they became real housewives, Jenna Lyons and Saida Silva were style stars. Mm -hmm. Jenna is the former president and executive creative director of J. Crew, and Sai is a successful fashion influencer. Now they are going to share with us their style essentials for the summer. Good. We're ooing and awing over these tables. I know, and they're kind of similar. Y'all have a vibe. You I do have a vibe. Let's let's start with Sai's cool shades. What do you have, Sai? You know how much I love sunglasses. I yes. feel like every time I'm here, I always have to have yes. a pair of sunglasses. Okay. Now these are two for because you're going to get two for the price of one. Okay. And they're very chic. They are a round. You can either get them in black or a tortoise shell, but let me try them Let's on see. for they're you. They're Barbie core. Wait, look at Sai. Are they giving you instant? Wait, look like, at, yeah. You instant know what? luxurious. I feel good. I feel great. Who's that girl? No paparazzi. <laughs> like you're By the way, those are cool on right? you. Right? No, I think you need the tortoise Your shell. Your styling is but awesome. But can any face, any face shape wear well, those? you'll tell me I right mean, now. I need you to I try think them mine is on too so large. You can check them out. I'm pretty sure my face is too too round. <laughs> if you buy one, you get two, so then you can share them. I think those are cool on you. Right? Do you like them on Hoda? Yeah. I think the, they look great. You do? Okay, yeah. Jenna, really, try. I think my face is too large, but no, we'll see. No, it's not. See? No. No, they, no, they, they look good. Really, look over they here. Look over really here. Good. Too right? They you look, look really good. No, you look cute. No, no. Yeah, you no, do. No, we don't have to tell. Don't we tell the truth. No, that was the truth. You actually, no, stop talking about your face. Okay. Promise me those look really great. Okay, now tell us about this bag. Okay, so the bag, it looks very luxurious for a fraction of the price. Now, this is something that you can wear in the day. It is summertime, so we can dress this up. We can dress this down. Possibly a blazer, a pair of jeans. It looks Where's nice with what you're wearing. It's Where is just, it? it is a really gorgeous bag. But oh, if you go ahead and you look inside, inside, there is a zipper. So you kind of really don't know what you're getting. No, I here. know. You're like, wait a minute. What's happening? But it is a beautiful, so beautiful piece. Right. Okay, and what about these sort of 90 slides? Let's bring back the, the 90s. Oh. Do you remember the slings yes. from Steve Madden yes. where you can hear someone coming a mile away? <laughs> click, click, click. Well, they're back. Those are cool. Steve Madden makes great um, shoes. Even my daughter is raving about these. Oh, wow. so these are fantastic, and 
and a great right. price. Jana, okay, Jenna, what do you have? My turn. Okay, yes. one of my favorite things for summer is hoops, and yes. you are supporting, and so is Cy. Yes. They're supporting. I wear hoops all summer long. Mm -hmm. These are some of my favorites. Um, this is one of the Jennifer Fisher ones that I love. It I hangs love really those. long. A really big one you have to have. These are great. Look the at little the tiny, huggies. tiny. And they're so light. Yeah, they're light. I know. Look how so light that is. This goes in my packing list anytime I'm going on a trip. This is, oh, thank, thanks, Thank Hoda. You. Sorry. <laughs> 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 we want to try this shape on her because we think that it'd be you good. can totally wear it. And I think okay. it's nice if you have a longer neck and you want them to really okay. show with your hair. Right. If your hair is long, they're okay. great. And that, that's a cool top. Okay, right so this there. is kind of a fun thing. So I wore this for to BravoCon, and everyone asked Wait, me. Do we have the picture? Where I, hope I got so. it. I don't know. There I am. Look, it's under my jacket. I oh, okay. You can see. So it's but just a little bit of mesh underneath, it's right? Just, yeah, I just wore it under a blazer. Oh. But there it is again. This thing. How pretty. I have so worn wait. this. It's twenty six dollars. What do you wear under it? Nothing. Well, I wear nothing, but a lot of people wear it. You can wear a bra, but it's basically, I wear, you, you can Couldn't wear, you wear like a black bandeau totally. or something? Totally. You can wear, a, you can wear anything. You can wear so it under a blazer. You can also wear it over, like it looks kind of great over white. Mm -hmm. So you could wear it over a tee. It's great over a bathing suit. I love it. I know it seems a little bit like not the most expected thing, but I'm into it. Yeah. I love it. Look. If I wear that cute. with nothing under on the show, the people dress, might though. be shocked. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, maybe that's not exactly what the look we're going. Okay, sorry. Okay. okay, there no, we go. No, it's okay. Diamond we're just going to leave it. Just, just, just leave it. it. Oh, let, right. let it hang. <laughs> just tuck it in. <laughs> okay, show me, um, show us these cool Tevas. <laughs> okay, so Tevas were back. Okay, so they're back. And if you've seen Kendall Jenner, these are mine, which you can actually see. So Tevas are back. And I mean, it's kind of the same thing that Sai's doing over there. Yeah. This clunkier, heavier shoe mm -hmm. is looking good again. And this is one of the Teva ones that I own. They're a little bit heavier. Um, you can see some of these here. They come in these all different colors, in white That's and in khaki. But oh, yeah. them like Ooh, Kendall Jenner's like wearing yeah, them, Gigi those. Hadid. And I know it seems like I did not. I like have revolted yeah, when these first came totally. out. I was like, absolutely not. And now I'm in. Like, How long totally did that take you to get back a in? A really long time. <laughs> a really, really long time. I'm wow. like I'm not a very willing participant. I mean, did you I ever think that this would go. work as a little? <laughs> so she I think so. Thing. Can they hear you? Yeah. Okay. Someone's a bag. All right, guys. By the way, season 14 of The Real Housewives of New York City premieres this Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern, on our sister network, Bravo. Thank you. Thank you, lovely ladies. Coming up next, one of the stars of Hack My Home, home Mikael Welch, shares his decor so shortcuts to save space and money right after this. So no, no, I could care less. But don't you love it? <laughs> Redecorating the space doesn't have to be overwhelming and expensive. You just need to know some tricks of the pros. We actually have a pro with us right here. <laughs> Mikkel Welch is the designer of the popular new Netflix show. It's called where Hack My Home. So it's where four place. experts where transform living spaces with their creative ideas. And Mikkel is here to share a few of his simple home decor shortcuts. I'm You're going to let us in on the secrets? Yes. I'm going to Come on. Wait, tell us about the show before yes. we get anywhere. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so it's one of those family-friendly shows where we're sitting down and we're just trying to come up with out-of-the-box solutions for storage. So, like, think about things that are coming from the ceilings, out of the walls. And it's like, how do we do this but make it aesthetically pleasing that's, at the same time? Boy, okay, if you can do both amazing. of those, you're about to do that right here. You're making so. us yes. a coffee this table? This is brilliant. Yes, so I'm going to so show you, pretty. ladies, how we can make this coffee table. The whole project is going to cost you less than $50. So, okay. that's not how bad. Do we so, let's, let's go through it. So the first thing that you want to grab is 
They call these armrests. Like, think of the old school armrests where, like, you put it on the end of your sofa and maybe you wanted to put a glass of wine, yeah. et cetera. So we're going to start with these as well as a plan. So if you go into Home Depot, you ask for armrests? You do. Yeah. Okay. You do. Okay. Okay. You do. They're, they're, now, they were going to look at you crazy because, like, only our grandparents, like, use these now. Yeah. But okay. you can get these in the hardware store as well. But I want you to take this place right here. It's a large sheet. It, it is pretty large. And now we're going to begin to wrap this around the side of the planter so you can kind of see how it's flexible it bends yeah. right it bends all right so here comes the fun part okay. so now here you want this part first oh yeah we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some liquid nails liquid and nails liquid nails and the good thing about this is it's very forgiving so as long as you're not getting crazy with it you can go ahead and you can keep applying. So do you put it all the way around? All the way around okay. we're okay. gonna go all the way around so for instance where you're at right now if I wanted to start here I can do like that. I now see. that doesn't bubble up or anything? No, nope. it does not. It does That's not so bubble up. so satisfying. Yeah, and what you want to do is just continue so that after process. You go all the way around. And once you no. go all the way around, it will stick. Exactly. Okay. And then what? All right, so then once we've done that, the next thing that you want to do is this is a lazy Susan. Oh. Yes. That's yes. so smart. So we're going to go into the kitchen and we're going to do the same thing. So I just take that lazy Susan once that dries overnight, yeah. and then I just give this a quick circular so formation. You're put it and yep. go right you on top. already knew. This is awesome. So is and then this... you get this great little side table. And that's Brilliant. what the end Brilliant. result looks Brilliant. like. Oh my right. gosh, it's so awesome. Okay. Thank you. Now, let, this is a thing that you see sometimes at like fancy hotels. Yeah. Yes. People gorgeous. covering their TVs. I, I love that. Yes. So this has been, I'm glad you said television. I was in a uh, hotel ironically in Texas. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this tapestry is amazing. And then I look behind, I'm like, no, honey, that's a TV. So this is a quick and easy way to hide your TV so you don't have to look at that big black uh, yeah. box that's sitting in front of you. So would you mind helping me take yes. this off? We can just kind of show how, how do it you works. Take, oh, you take the pole. Yep, you that's just take it. the pole right off. No, brilliant. And no tools are really needed other than glue and like a screwdriver. Oh, that is that amazing. Is so smart, and it changes the room. Look at the difference. Yes. Yeah. So let's show you how you get that okay. done. I so I think that. you all are going to really, really like this. Okay. All right. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to start out with a rug. I say an inexpensive rug. Okay. And once you've done that, you want to go ahead and measure your, uh, your TV. Mm -hmm. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and you can get ready to create what we're going to call the drapery pole, mm -hmm. if you will. So what I do is I lay this out. Mm -hmm. And you want to take your fabric and maybe go about, let's say, a foot over yeah and we're creating that drapery pocket right mm -hmm. so now that this is set all we do is take more, crazy glue more crazy? glue i love your glue you glue are, you're making everything simple yeah, yeah we don't even need power tools and so, probably you can find right. like old antique okay. ones that you are can an expensive, we right? can so okay. you you got this we here we got you all, all right, right let's move to this easy. sneaky what? space saver what Brilliant. is this well you got a little sneak peek but if you had to guess what do you think this beautiful picture is. I mean, we did not think it we was what it was. It was. Cabinet, we thought it was we saw it's it. a cabinet. Yes. A spice cabinet. This is a spice cabinet. It's Let's actually see. a medicine cabinet oh. that we've converted and we got tricky and we turned this into a nice little place in the kitchen where aesthetically you can have your beautiful artwork yeah. that can have some function behind it yeah. and you have all of your spices that you need and you're ready to go. Oh so you've taken, God. is this the medicine cabinet? Yes, yeah, so this is the original medicine cabinet. We took the door off completely, and once we took the door off, we were able to swap it out for a picture frame. How cool is that? You're so smart. Well, thank oh my gosh, you. Mikhail. But then, do you have to cut a hole in your wall to put this part in? So you can do it one of two ways. You yeah. can either recess it directly into yeah. the wall, or if you just want to bolt this to the wall itself, Fine. you're good to go. Yeah. 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 By the so way, either way. Great. Excellent. Such good idea. Everybody <laughs> is loving this show. All right. You can check out more of Mikkel's decor uh, ideas on Hack My Home. It's streaming right now on Netflix. Coming up next, from the infamous hacking of a dating website to the secret life of a Hollywood legend, we've got the hot docs to watch. Coming up. By the way, that's brilliant. Thank you. That is so.
All right, we love a good documentary around here, so we want to tell you about three that are getting a lot of attention. It's a segment we call Hoda and Jenna's Hot Docs. Okay, so let's take a look at our first hot doc. It is... Whoa. Rock, <laughs> Rock Hudson, All That Heaven Allowed. It's about actor Rock Hudson, who is an icon of masculinity and Hollywood's hottest leading man from the 50s and 60s. He was forced to live his true life as a gay man in secret. Take a look. An icon. He was by far the biggest star in Hollywood. Not only did women say, that's the man I want to marry, many men said, that's the man I'd like to be. He had more than one world. And he had the studio world, he had this gay world. If the truth had come out, that would have been the end of his career. It's as simple as that. Oh, you. Hiding in closets isn't going to cure you. Wow, wow. Oh my gosh. Rock Hudson, All That Heaven Allowed is available to stream now on Max. All right, our next hot doc is... <laughs> the Ashley Madison Affair. So this docuseries follows the rise of Ashley Madison, a website dedicated to help people cheat on their spouses. Take a look. They were going to release all of this data, exposing would-be cheaters. I've had the urge to check his phone, and then it was all just right there. He had a fake name, and I saw the other woman. My husband outsourced desire to anyone else. I just went nuts. And it hurts a lot of innocent people. And then it exploded. Among the high-profile victims, Vatican addresses. Politicians and celebrities. Wow. Um, All three episodes <laughs> of the Ashley Madison Affair available to stream right now on Hulu. Okay, our last hot dog. Wham! Using interviews and footage from the band members Andrew Ridgely and the late George Michaels, the doc follows the wild ride of the iconic pop duo. Take a look. We had a number one album, we had a string of hit singles, and we were selling out arenas. How can the country be in love with these two idiots? Next thing you know... With Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go... Wham mania had arrived. It's Wham. Wake me up before you go, go. Leave me hanging on like a yo-yo. Wake me up before you go, go. I don't want to miss it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. These are all good. And y'all, Wham is available to stream right now on Netflix. All right, coming up next. It's only Tuesday, but we are already thinking Sunday. Oh, and I face off in an ice cream Sunday showdown right after this. Mm-hmm. Today is Make Your Own Sunday mm. Day, which is just another excuse for an epic food battle. So it is time for Hoda and Jenna's Sunday <laughs> Showdown. Um, we, of course, need some things, but most importantly, we need Katie. Yeah. Yes. Katie's here. She's going to get us started. What, do right. we, what should we do, Katie? Help. So first we need to explain, both of you picked okay. unique ingredients for National Sunday Day. Okay. And our judge, which we didn't know about this before, is it, um, I think an expert in this category okay. because they're a little bit younger and they have a very refined palate in oh. the ice cream category. Okay. A child. Yes, a child. <laughs> okay. So, which has made me rethink some things, but that's okay. Okay. Hoda, do you want to explain your toppings yes. and your ice creams? So um, I chose, I'm a 
caramel, a caramel lover. So I have caramel, salted caramel ice cream. I've got caramel sauce. I've got some nice Heath Bar Ooh. topping, okay? Wow. And chocolate sprinkles uh -huh. and some of this. I have a lot of you good things here. You don't even know here. what this is. Yes, I do. No, it's that delicious. was just and for what, me. And brown, no, no, no. This I had to for you that. Your There's a special a too. Stop taking my things. A brownie base. Okay, Ooh, okay, so Jenna. What you got? Jenna, so here? mine is, this is actually what I requested and it's homemade whipped cream. Too. Homemade whipped cream. You did not. You like the whipped cream out of the bottle. Yes, I do. Re yes, I do. This well, is homemade. We'll let Henry decide. Henry I like, um, Henry's going to like this. I like Oreos. I love an Oreo. I actually mm. got coffee ice cream, which I'm not going to use because okay. of Henry, and Dolce de Leche. Oh, I love it. You know, I used to work in the ice cream shop, so let's see, how, right. let's see how pro right. your skills are. Okay. We're going to put 45 seconds on the clock. A little dipping well between flavors. Okay. Are you ready? 45 seconds. That's all you have, Jim. Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. okay. On your marks, <laughs> get set, go. Okay. <laughs> on the bottom, a beautiful thing. Ooh, Hoda's got a little brownie base. Oh my God, you did Oreo. Yeah, are you happy, are you happy with this? Like don't it. copy me, Jenna. I'm not copying. Like well, you might be. I don't have it. Oh, look at this beautiful. Oh, look at my scoop. Ice cream. What, what skill going on over right here? I used to now? work at Scoops. Did you really? Yes. She got fired. <laughs> well, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> she sure did, though. How much time? Katie, keep us on. Uh, 22 seconds. Oh, 22 seconds. Plenty of time. For an ice cream Sunday, you can make like multiple in this amount of time. Okay, Ooh. okay, Jenna. <gasps> Stay look focused. Look at that drizzle. Oh my God. Stay focused. Oh my God. Oh, 10 seconds. Stay focused. Stay focused. Oh, yeah, baby. Whoa. Four, three, two. Oh, we got you. Boom. 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 Shock it like a boom. Oh my God. They look great. Wow. Okay. Okay. These look stunning. I think okay. it's time to bring out our special Come guest. On, Come on, Henry. Come on, Henry. Okay, Henry. Henry's, Henry has a. Uh, yeah. Introduce Henry. He is our producer, Henry, Sarah Claggett. Hi. Hi, Henry. He's 11. Henry, what do you like in a good Sunday? Um, ice cream. Okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Henry, here you go. Mm -hmm. You like coffee ice cream? I didn't put coffee in no, it. I'm this is called <laughs> the Oreo Deluxe. Okay. I made it just for you. Uh -huh. it looks yummy. Okay. Thank you, Henry. Give it a try. And if you've noticed, there's okay. Oreo. Okay, no, no, there's no influencing the child. Mm -hmm. Please don't eat my toppings. <laughs> Get down in well, there. Get this fight right here. All of all of the all the mm -hmm. toppings. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Henry, that's good enough. <laughs> okay. Right. No, and you okay, can take out. this oh, for the no. road. No, come here, Henry. Okay. okay. We'll Henry. do a little palate cleanser and then we'll try Hoda's. Sorry, Sarah, for his sugar crash later. <laughs> okay. Henry, I'm gonna. Can I help you with a? You want to take a sip of water? No, 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 no. No, I'm no. just spooning him out a spoon. <laughs> like He's not Henry. a baby. He knows how to do it himself. Right, Henry? Tell him. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big bite, but I think right. you can handle it. Take a minute, because this is going to be epic. Wait, this feels I, like cheating. <laughs> but okay. Feeding him? Oh! oh! Henry. Oh, oh, he just had a weird reaction. No, Are you okay? Because it was cold. No, he, he, no because his he, tooth he was He got hurting. electrocuted by all, all right. the sugar. Okay. Okay. Henry, now, Henry, Henry, take a breath. Decide. Okay. Right, let him finish. Okay. He's. Oh, now you're after my... Uh -huh. Well, you ate my Oreo. Well, okay. Okay. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Both are very good. Okay, okay. good. But d d yeah. My winner oh. is. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Henry! Henry! You just like Oreos? Yeah. You just like Oreos. Mm -hmm. no, Henry? No, and my homemade no, whipped cream. I think we have a prize for Jenna, right? I think we're going to bring it up. Jenna oh. wins the golden oh. spoon. Well, thank <laughs> you. Jenna, congratulations. Thank congratulations. you. Congratulations. You know what, Henry? Henry you're amazing. This is for yeah. you. Henry, thank you're you. Oh. Gift card. $25. Thank you. <laughs> Buy your most of ice cream. And don't worry, I'm going to give you that $5 later. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. <laughs> that ice cream. What is
Tomorrow, from the new movie, They Cloned Tyrone, we've got John Boyega. Plus, Maria Shriver stops by with an important conversation for women. We love our Maria. And then you'll be feeling good with a performance by O-N-E, the duo. Amazing. We'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. The rush of the water, the thrill of the catch. For many, fishing isn't just a hobby or a career, it's a lifestyle. In the US, women account for roughly 10% of commercial fishermen, but they've long played a vital role in the global seafood industry. I'm Elena Besser. As a chef, recipe developer, and content creator, I'm always hungry to learn more about the people who keep our food systems running. So I'm heading out to meet two women making waves in the fishing world and creating more space for everyone at the table. Welcome to the lush forests, expansive beaches, and pristine rivers of Washington State's Olympic Peninsula. Pacific Coast Indigenous peoples have called these bountiful lands their home for millennia. The Quinault Indian Nation is one of many tribes that fishes, hunts, and forages here. As a non-native, I'm fortunate to be invited to the Quinault Reservation by fishing guide and tribal member, Ashley Lewis. When I think about the rivers, the oceans, the lakes out here, what I think about is home. Ashley comes from a long line of Native Americans who fish these waters for years. In the 1850s, many tribes were forced to give up their land for white settlements, but they retained fishing and hunting rights on traditional lands. During the 1960s, as Washington state began infringing on those rights, Native Americans staged a series of protests known as fish-ins. These protests led to a landmark Supreme Court decision that protects Native fishing rights to this day. One activist at the forefront of that movement was Janet McLeod, dubbed the Rosa Parks of the American Indian Movement. Her advocacy has inspired generations of indigenous trailblazers, including my guide. When they were forced to cede their land for newcomers, their waterscapes, the rivers, the lakes, it makes so much sense that that was the thing that's like, no, we have to have this because it's so essential to who we are. Quinault tribal members have exclusive hunting and fishing rights on a portion of this river. I couldn't wait to see Ashley's favorite fishing spots with the help of fellow guides Ruben Estevio and John Tater Bryson. If you want to think like a fish, just think like a really lazy person. Great. Like, what is going to be the easiest thing to do? Uh -huh. Is it, do you want to go up that fast water? Not really. You right. want to kind of be in like the slow, easy water. Time for a quick casting lesson. We're just going to swing straight back and then we're going to swing straight forward. You can kind of feel when the current catches it. Okay. Go ahead and give it a shot. That was a good cast. Thank that was you. a great cast. That's high praise coming from Ashley, who's been a guide here for the past decade. Now she's become something of a celebrity among outdoor enthusiasts, amassing a large following on social media, where she goes by the handle Bad Ash. Her YouTube and Instagram pages are chock full of how-to videos and inspiring content from her many outdoor adventures. Can you explain to me some of the 
you know, stereotypical experiences that you have had that have been a little bit tough as a female fisherman in this community. Being a woman in a male-dominated sport poses challenges. Some people want me to stay in a lane that isn't my lane. I would like to see the outdoor industry be more welcoming to women. I would like to see it be more welcoming to women of color and people of color. I feel really proud to get to chip away at that on my own terms. Here we go. Reconnecting with the Quinault and their fishing traditions has been a journey for Ashley. She grew up removed from her tribe, living an hour off the reservation with her mom and two siblings. I grew up in a really small community, moved to a smaller community, one stoplight in town sort of deal. And you had two options. You um, get in trouble or you go fishing. Okay. And I picked fishing. <laughs> I love it. And why did your mom choose to raise you off of the reservation? She experienced a lot of adversity as a younger woman and as a Native American woman. And so some of that adversity caused her to be really protective of her kids. And she wanted us to love our culture. The Quinault are a matriarchal society. Women serve as the head of the household and often take on tribal leadership roles. The women here also help with traditional food gathering. Ashley grew up fishing with her mom, but didn't always appreciate the cultural meaning behind these trips. Tell me a little bit about how you met your tribal family. So about the time that I got a driver's license and I could take myself fishing, <laughs> things really changed for me. <laughs> and so I would kind of drive out to the reservation, explore a little bit, being out there among other Quinaults, fishing for salmon, that's everything that I needed. Yeah. And so that moment was profound to me. John Tater Bryson, one of the first professional guides she met on the reservation, soon became her mentor. I was taught from a young age how to harvest elk and deer and fish. And it's passed on to the younger people, so the tradition will keep going. I think I got something. Oh, you definitely do. What a cutie. Oh, hey, my guy. Bye. Ashley enjoys showcasing this beautiful place to new people, but she's also made it her mission to call out the effects of climate change to this land. What we're seeing here, this is a big slide, and we're seeing a lot of this along our river, and this is the effects of climate change. She's currently earning a PhD in Indigenous Studies, with plans to educate people about the tribes of the PNW and the environmental threats they face. With the weather warming, with different rain patterns, it changes the river, but it also changes where fish are going to be spending time. Fishing guides are like an indicator species because we're the ones out in the river day in and day out. We're the ones who see changes happening really quickly. Because of the climate threats to the Quinault, the Biden administration granted the tribe $25 million to help relocate members in flood-prone areas. This is, you know, ancient village sites. This is burial ground sites. And so to see those places washed away, this is a really significant blow to us. Indigenous people are generally the first impacted by climate change, especially if you're situated right on the Pacific Ocean. Sustainability practices are tenets for the Quinault. Three tribal-run fish hatcheries help maintain the populations of salmon and trout species that call this river home. Every spring, millions of salmon and steelhead are released from these hatcheries. So we were a few miles upriver fishing, mm -hmm. but now we're here at the mouth. The Pacific Ocean is right on the other side of our fish house here, and this is where tribal members come and set their nets and commercially fish for blueback sockeye. It's the only place in the world where our blueback sockeye run, so okay, it's an great. incredibly special fish to us. Commercial salmon fishing is a big part of the economy on the res. The most efficient way to get a big catch is by using a method called gill netting. Gill nets are placed near the mouth of the river to catch salmon by the gills as they head upstream. Whoa, double trouble. That's a huge one. As a chef, I've cooked fish many different ways, but this was the freshest catch I've ever tried. Cooking salmon the way her tribe has for generations is a cherished pastime for Ashley, who celebrates her culture through food. The fish is a really wonderful, tasty, oily fish, mm -hmm. and we just want to highlight the greatness that already lives here. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, 
The flavor that we're gonna give it really is gonna come from the alder fire and the cedar sticks. After the fish is on the pole, it's supported with cedar sticks woven across the filet. The salmon cooks until it turns light pink, another five minutes, then it's ready to serve. So now we can enjoy ourselves some quinault fish sticks. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. Mm. I'm never ever gonna look at a normal fish stick ever again in the same <laughs> way. Comes right off of that skin. It really doesn't need anything else. Let the food shine. Absolutely. Yeah. After an incredible day of catching and cooking fish on the Quinault River, it was time for a trip to the beach. At sunrise, my guide Ashley Lewis and tribal biologist Scott Mazzoni are ready to show me another local pastime, digging for razor clams. Can you tell me a little bit more about what we're doing today? We are getting ready to have uh, uh, home use digs, subsistence digs, and commercial digs of razor clams. And before we do that, we got to go out and get clam samples and test them to make sure there's no toxins in them and they're self, uh, safe for people to eat. Pacific razor clams are a meaty shellfish with an oblong shell. They can grow up to six inches. They're also a delicacy here and a major part of the Quinault diet. So we're gonna use these spade tempered shovels. They're kind of curved in a way that makes it easy for us to dig the clams. Great. So we're gonna head out to the surf. We're gonna look for clam shows. As we walk towards the surf, Ashley points out small holes and dimples in the sand. These are known as clam shows, evidence that razor clams are just beneath the surface. That looks like a good spot. Whoa! There we are. Down here they have their foot and that they can use to dig very quickly down into the sand. Hey. He's like, I'm out of here. Thank you and goodbye. Ooh. I gotta tell you, even though it's 5 a.m., all of this razor clam digging is making me extremely hungry and ready to eat them. <laughs> and they are as delicious as they are fun to dig. <laughs> It was finally time for me to see what all the fuss is really about. At nearby Ocean Crest restaurant, razor clams are a menu staple. Head chef Amanda Yeager has prepared a few of their signature dishes made with fresh local clams. On the menu, a panko crusted razor clam steak served with pickled onions and a chili aioli. There's also a razor clam omelet plus a flatbread topped with Amanda's house-made razor clam sausage. Mmm. There's a common misconception with large clams, you know, oh, would it taste rubbery, but this does not at all. That's a lot of how it's treated. It's, you know, low and slow heat, and that's why they maintain their flavor and their texture. Respect. Wow. So much. Everyone knows and loves a chicken cutlet. This is so tender on the inside. You're getting an amazing, crisp exterior. That crunch and acidity coming from the onion, it is the perfect bite. 
As my time on the Quinault land comes to a close, I'm already sad to leave this incredible place. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you could say one thing to the people that are watching this, what, what would you want them to know about you and about this community? My very favorite piece about guiding is not actually the fishing. It is the way that it changes the way people start seeing the natural world. It could tell a lot about history, it could give you a lot of information, but I do know from my experience that when people are there and experience it, they're gonna become curious and that's what I want the most. to high-end seafood, lobster is pretty much king. Maine is the largest lobster producer in the country, with catchers here harvesting over 100 million pounds of the crustacean every year. I've just always admired the fishermen, and to even be able to say that I'm a fisherman just means so much to me. Sadie Samuels is the only female commercial lobster boat captain in the small town of Rockport. Her day starts before sunrise when she buys bait for her traps. Hi. Hey, Sadie. Welcome. Oh, it's so great to find you. Look at this stunning place of work. Are you kidding? With its rocky underwater terrain and cool waters year round, the Gulf of Maine is a perfect home for lobsters. Bye, guys. The lobster industry here generates over $1 billion for the state. But those big bucks aren't made easily. Fishing for lobsters is one of the most dangerous professions. The fatality rate is 2.5 times the national average. Can you tell me a little bit more about how dangerous this job actually is? It's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. The first funeral I ever went to was one of the fishermen in my harbor who went out by himself and he got roped like die on, so he on drowned. lobster. Yes, he drowned. Why do you stay in this despite all of the pain and dangers that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis? I literally never imagined doing anything else with my entire life. Sadie's passion for fishing stems from her childhood. Her father, Matt Samuels, has been catching lobsters for over 60 years. He was up before sunrise and out the door and then he'd get home and he'd just work until dark and come in and eat dinner and pass out. So the only way I could really hang out with him was if I wanted to like get involved with what he was doing. And then I just stuck around and I never left. <laughs>
When she was just seven, Sadie got her student lobster license. She began working right away, dropping a couple traps off her dad's boat for extra cash. By age 14, she saved enough money to buy the boat she still fishes with today. I don't think I fully considered that it was like my career or gonna be my career until a little bit later in life, until I was like 14, 15. I love how you said later in life when I was about 14. I just, <laughs> I just started getting serious about it. You were 14. That is hilarious and amazing. After studying art in college, Sadie quickly returned to a life at sea. Like when I'm out here, I'm just like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Today, Sadie doesn't just catch lobsters, she also dishes up fresh lobster rolls at her seat to table restaurant, also named Must Be Nice. I would like you to walk me through your day from start to finish, so lay it on me. <laughs> so my average day is waking up around four o'clock, quarter to four, go to the boat, and then we haul about 250 traps, crate up the lobsters that we're bringing over to the restaurant, and then the restaurant closes at seven. In Maine, just 15% of lobster licenses are held by women. But anyone who catches lobsters is called a lobsterman, which Sadie stands behind. How do you feel about the term lobsterman? I'm very much on the side of like, I'm a fisherman, I'm a lobsterman. I busted my butt and paid my dues. Nothing I do really has to do with my gender. Maine fishing laws have strict limits on the number of traps new lobstermen can set. Over time, they can acquire more traps, but it can take several years to make a livable wage. How did you get savvy with making sure that you could function as a successful business? That's actually how I started Must Be Nice Lobster, is on Saturdays, someone was looking for someone to sell lobsters at a farmer's market. I started selling live lobsters there and then now we're here. The trap limits are part of Maine's successful conservation efforts. In the 90s, there were around 37 million pounds of lobster in the Gulf of Maine. Today, it's nearly 120 million pounds. Fishermen actually were the ones who started to put a lot of those practices in place. Those regulations impose strict sizing guidelines. Sadie actually throws back many of the lobsters she catches. That one will be good next year. Small lobsters are too young for sale, while many older, large lobsters get thrown back to breed. So this is a, a big hard shell female. You can see on her, if you turned her the other way, She's it's the second to right swimmerette has this mutilation on it. Got it. Which means that someone else has caught her before with eggs on it. A keeper lobster has a body that measures between three to five inches. It can take a lobster about seven years to reach that size. Finally, a lobster that was just right. Look at those claws. Nice male, really gorgeous lobster. He's definitely a keeper. Yeah, you're coming home with us, babe. Climate change is making these size regulations more crucial than ever. The Gulf of Maine is one of the Earth's fastest warming bodies of water, which can make lobsters more vulnerable to disease and less likely to reproduce. Why is sustainability so important to you? We're so connected with nature and so connected with our environment that it like feels like our duty. At Sadie's restaurant, she's dedicated to sourcing her ingredients sustainably. The lobster chowder uses a seafood stock made from an invasive crab species. And she's adding a new locally raised item to the menu. This season we're adding in oysters and I'm super excited because we're trying to focus as much as we can on female owned farms and also the quality of the seafood is like outstanding.
To get a sneak peek at her new menu offering, Sadie took me to meet farm manager Bonita Johnson at Wright Cove Oyster Farm. So tell me a little bit more about these oysters. We're a small operation here, and so we do kind of everything by hand. Wow. And uh, yeah, they're raised with love. You and, can taste it. And yeah, <laughs> you really can. Do you want to try one real quick? Um, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Sorry, I've been waiting over here. <laughs> Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. These are hands down some of my favorite oysters mm. ever. So clean, but briny. I've never had anything like this before. I'm blown away. You don't do anything in the working waterfront type of industry unless you have passion for it. Mm -hmm. And that's a really nice thing for us to like get to share with each other. Yeah. This is definitely my happy place. Back at Must Be Nice, Sadie is steaming our catch before picking meat for her signature lobster rolls. Hey, fresh caught, fresh cooked. I just had to know the secrets behind the Sadie sauce lobster roll. So how did you come up with the sauce? So I've had plenty of people, you know, from away say that Maine's lobster rolls are really boring. And I kind of took offense to that. I was yeah. like, you know what? I gotta come up with something that like packs a punch, has a bit of a spice. It starts with shallots, celery, and parsley blended in a food processor. Sadie then adds a not so secret blend of dried herbs and spices. Can you reveal what's it's in this spice It's mainly blend? paprika. The spicy part is cayenne. A mix of lemon juice and rice wine vinegar kick up the acid. And then there's a generous squeeze of stone ground mustard. Now we just add in the rest of this olive oil and then I'm gonna blend it for a little while until that just seems totally incorporated. There we go. Ooh, that is gorgeous. And that is the Sadie sauce. Sadie packs each toasted bun with a hefty handful of lobster meat. Look at this. Are you kidding me? To finish, a sprinkling of homegrown chives. I can't wait to try that. I'm so pumped. Inspired by Sadie's creativity, I wanted to make something special, a lobster BLT. One of my favorite foods in the summertime is a BLT. And mm -hmm. it really screams summer. And also what screams summer is a juicy lobster roll. So I figured they would pair beautifully together. We're starting with cherry tomatoes. And the reason why I sliced the tomatoes first is because I like to hit them with a little bit of salt. Yes, I brought oh, yeah. a little flaky salt. And what this is gonna do is it's really just gonna pull out all those flavors and make them taste as juicy and delicious as possible. This is my best pal mayo. I spice up my mayo with grated garlic, the juice and zest of a lemon, black pepper, and chives. It's such an honor to like cook with the lobster that you have caught. So I just, <laughs> first of all, want to say thank you because this is like the coolest. You are more than welcome. It is my joy. This is a meat lover's dream. So we're going to add two pieces of bacon Woo! on either side. We're then going to take a gorgeous lettuce leaf and that's like the boat that's gonna catch all that sauce for us. Just add the lobster, cherry tomatoes, and a final sprinkle of chives. Voila. Well, that is gorgeous. And there you go, BLT lobster roll. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, this might fall Cheers. over Cheers, if it does, it's part of the fun. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh man, this is insane. This Sadie sauce is slamming. Hubba hubba. I'm honestly having a hard time hearing what you're saying because <laughs> I'm having a moment with this one over here. Oh my God. This is literally perfect. Yay. At dinner, I couldn't wait to learn more from the women here who support each other through their passion for fresh local seafood. When people see that this is a sea to table restaurant and then they find out that you ladies were the ones that actually caught and grew the food that is being served here. What do they say to you? I feel like people, they're super excited about it and really happy that they found us. Then they can taste it with the quality of our seafood or they're in complete disbelief and like, okay, yeah, but your dad caught these. So they're literally saying to you, 
no, this is a man's job. Well, I think some people have been a little too sheltered and just haven't gotten to see what us women can do. <laughs> and it's up to that. us to show them. Honestly, that's Cheers. another opportunity to toast. I love it. Time to dig in. Mm. I'm really into this BLT one. This is going on the menu, by the way. <laughs> Elena's roll. We're gonna call it Elena's roll. <laughs> Ladies, this is a dinner I will never forget, so I truly can't thank you enough for all of your hard work in making this happen, and thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> From the smoky salmon of the Quinault Nation to the buttery, sweet lobster of Maine, I'm in awe of our nation's most delicious seafood. But I'm most inspired by the women paving their own paths in this industry and ensuring future generations will have plenty of fish in the sea. Ah, pizza. The golden crust, the tangy sauce, and that ooey gooey cheese. It's no surprise that this divine creation is one of America's most popular foods. But in the countless pizzerias I've been to, it's still pretty rare to see a woman tossing dough or tending a giant oven. I'm Elena Besser. I'm a professional chef, recipe developer, and content creator, so I'm constantly curious about who is making my meals. Now I'm heading out to meet the women breaking barriers in the pizza world today and creating more space for everyone at the table. Mankind has been eating flatbreads for centuries, but the modern pizza was invented in Naples, Italy. It was popular among the working class who needed meals that were quick and cheap. When Queen Margarita of Savoy visited Naples in the late 1800s, Chef Raphael Esposito served her a pie inspired by Italy's national colors. The Queen's approval turned this humble street food into a royal favorite. So you could say it was a woman who really put pizza on the world map. I think the love from pizza is something I always say, uh, I think is my blood. Georgia Capruccio owns Manhattan's Don Antonio, known for its classic Neapolitan pies. While New York City has thousands of pizzerias, very few are actually owned by women. What do your guests say when they walk into the restaurant and they see a woman standing at the pizza oven making their pizza? So some of the people are, are really, I can see from the face, they're surprised. So and they bring the kids, they bring the daughter to see, to have, you know, pizza, and it's super fun. Georgia is one of only two women to ever win one of Italy's largest pizza competitions, a feat she accomplished at just 21 years old. Her victory surprised everyone, including Georgia herself. It was crazy. My father signed for me Wait, so he signed you up to compete in this competition and yeah. you had no idea? No idea. Zero idea. Five minutes before the competition started, he came to me and said, oh, by the way, I signed up for you. Georgia placed first in the classic pizza category, cementing her love for the craft and giving her shop a major boost. I never, never imagined that I was, you know, I can win. I was super happy. That moment it was unique because I remember it feel free, feel, feel super light. Growing up on a dairy farm in Terracina, Italy, Georgia's love for pizza started early. Tell me some of your earliest food memories. So my grandmother, for example, she was making pizza for me okay. every Sunday with just tomato sauce and oregano, so really simple. So I that's true grandma style pizza from yeah. grandma herself. Georgia's grandmother may have introduced her to pizza, but it was her father, Roberto Capruccio, that made it a true family obsession. Roberto left his family and moved to Naples to study the art of pizza making. Georgia was just eight years old, so she rarely saw him growing up. By the early 2000s, Roberto's culinary chops brought him to the U.S. His restaurant, Keste, is touted as serving some of the best pizza in New York City. Did you ever think that you would end up in food one day? Never. Never. Also, when I first arrived over here, like I come in like New York for learn English, mm -hmm. and never imagined. So the only option for me 
to, to know my father or to understand what he was doing is stay with him. This is why I started to make pizza. So Georgia moved to the States to reconnect with her father. Georgia was the only woman assembling pies in the kitchen, so she was motivated to prove she belonged. And also everybody, all the co-workers was make fun of me because Why? I was, because I don't know how to make pizza. I don't cook at home. So yeah. you're like, I'll show you. She shadowed her father for three years, but Roberto wanted his daughter to train harder. He sent her to Naples to study with his former mentor. She was the only female apprentice in her class. What were the responses from the other people that were learning alongside you, those men. So like they don't they don't feel that I can do like I can be successful or I can be or you know reach a high level of you know be a pizza maker because they say oh one day you have kids so you stay home. Did you ever respond to them or did you just ignore them? I ignore my pizza is my business card. Georgia returned to the US with a renewed determination to make pizza her profession. She opened Don Antonio with her father in 2012. When did you have that spark where you realized, oh my goodness, this is what I'm gonna do for my career? When uh, I opened Don Antonio. So, okay. And uh, I was really in charge of everything in the kitchen. By that moment I say, I need to be the best. There's this term going around right now called Nepo baby, where it's the concept oh, yeah. of nepotism. But you have really taken time to learn the craft and do the work to prove yourself. So do you feel like you've been able to move outside of your dad's shadow? Not yet. Georgia says customers are still surprised that she's running the shop these days, not her famous father. He never saw a lot daughter follow, you know, pizza maker, uh, father pizza maker. After working 13 hour days for nearly a decade, she's had to take a step back with her first child on the way. Working in a kitchen, I can speak from experience, it is incredibly physically demanding. Yes. So how have you had to adapt as you've seen your body change? So I changed completely. <laughs> I need to change completely. Uh, so before I was really strong. Uh, I don't need to eat, I don't need to sleep a lot. Today, 10% of people working in the food and hospitality industries have access to some type of parental leave. Georgia is keenly aware she's in a unique position. I'm really lucky because I can organize myself in my job, mm -hmm. the other woman cannot. Right, you're, a, you're the boss, so you can call the shots and that actually works to your advantage. Yes. At Don Antonio, I was ready to see this boss get to work. Italy, just like the US, is home to many different regional styles of pizza. Georgia specializes in Neapolitan pizza, which is prized for its simplicity and high quality ingredients. The dough, the tomatoes, the types of cheese, and the techniques are all strictly regulated by two associations based in Naples. Georgia used to train chefs with the Associazione Pizzaioli Napoletani. So I was ready to learn from a true pizzaiola. What is the first step? So we start with the tomato. Neapolitan pizzas must be topped with tomatoes grown close to Naples. So basically I crush like that. Ooh, that must feel nice. Yes. The base of the dough uses water, fresh yeast, salt, and imported double zero flour, which refers to its super fine grind. This dough has been fermenting for a full day. So you can see the bubbling. Nice. So Neapolitan pizza, the characteristic is the bubble crust. The dough is cut and shaped into little balls, which rest for another five hours. For now this. we need to start to make the pizza. This is Semolina. See the... Look at the bubbles. It's yes. alive. So now, what pizza maker, Neapolitan pizza maker do is like just push the air. Okay. Oh wow, and you can see all of that air is pushing out to create that crust. Can I try? Yeah. It feels so fluffy. After the dough is stretched, it's time for the toppings. First up, the tomato sauce. So one exactly spoon. Now we put basil, pecorino. Okay, and that's a little saltier than traditional Parmesan. The pizza is finished with a hefty handful of mozzarella and a generous drizzle of fruity extra virgin olive oil. 
Then it's ready for the oven. And that's it. I love it. Ready to go. To the oven. The key to a stellar Neapolitan pizza is an incredibly hot wood-burning oven. This one, brought over from Italy, burns at a scorching 900 degrees. So it only takes two minutes for the pies to cook. There we go. Wow. This is your pizza. This is stunning. God. Cheers. Cheers. Oh my goodness. Wow. This is the crust that you want on the bottom. Like thin, but you have the crunchy also. I cannot handle how much flavor is in such simplicity. I am in heaven. At Don Antonio in New York City, I couldn't wait to try Giorgia's award-winning Montanara, a fried pizza. Fried pizza is one of the oldest pizza that was invented, created in Naples. And no you can find way. It. Yes. Wow, I had no idea. So if you see the movie with the Sofia Loren, uh -huh. the gold of Naples, okay. she was fried on the street. Women are tied to fried pizza. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so, so the women in the Naples uh, try to help and sustain the family. They were right. really poor, poor mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. So they start to fry and sell on the street. The okay, pizza. amazing. So and it really all started with the women. Let's yes. not forget that. Yes. <laughs> Georgia fries the same traditional dough to a golden brown. Then she tops it with tomato sauce, pecorino, basil, and smoked buffalo mozzarella. To get that gooey melted cheese, she finishes the pie in the oven for less than a minute. Wow, it looks so puffy. It almost looks like focaccia. It's the most delicious and simple. You got that crispy crust on the outside but you're still getting such a doughy, light, fluffy center. You need to try at least one time in your life. Absolutely, are you kidding? I had no idea that this exists. Despite her success, Georgia knows there's still a long way to go when it comes to representation in the pizza world. In 2019, she helped co-found Women in Pizza, an organization that helps support and connect chefs, restaurant owners, and food entrepreneurs. Two of George's closest friends from the group stopped by Don Antonio. The friendship that we create is more really tight, much deep friendship that you can create in the pizza world. Alexandra Mortati was inspired to start the group after talking to many women in the restaurant world with shared experiences. Alexandra, you've talked about how women are often hidden in pizza shops. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I think a lot of times women get slotted into roles that people think they're best fit for. Mm -hmm. Because you're a woman, maybe you seem more nurturing, they want to put you in management. Or maybe you're really good with people, they want to put you as the hostess or somewhere in the front. But what you might be interested in is making the pizza. And you have to fight a lot harder for them to give you that space to prove yourself. 
Nicole Russell, a pizza maker who hosts the show Pizza Wars, agrees. Women just have different challenges and different barriers to entry than the average guy. And it's like, you know, one thing about being in Women in Pizza is that a lot of times when we do the show demos, I'll be the only woman with all the guys. And they're just so dominant and like, you know, we're also passionate about making right. pizza, you know? And we all can't wait to just make the pizza. But sometimes you just gotta, uh, uh, get out the way, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think it's important that, you know, you always hear about a grandma slice, but actually you see a grandma representation. Yeah. <laughs> like you hear the grandma slice, but where's the grandma? Where is the grandma? Right, yeah. right, Nona's at home, right? Well, bring Nona out. Yes. So that's what Woman in Pizza is kind of about. All love, but just showcasing more, you know, how much women are a force in this industry. And I think now there's a lot more room where men are mentoring younger women and women are mentoring younger women um, and empowering them. And it wouldn't be possible without women like Georgia and Nicole. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. 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 Pizza. Women in pizza. Yeah, to women in pizza. Where I live in the Big Apple, there are plenty of incredible pizza restaurants with pretty much every type of slice you can imagine. But there's a surprising place down south where folks are really flipping out for something special. I want to be throwing dough. I want to be covered in flour and pizza sauce. It's kind of like my serenity. Welcome to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the famed Route 66 runs right into the historic downtown. This city is known for its Art Deco buildings and world-class museums dedicated to music legends Woody Guthrie and Bob Dylan. But unlike many visitors, I'm not here to dive into memorabilia. I'm here to meet Tara Hatton, a rising star on the national pizza scene. Oh my gosh, it's so great to finally meet you. Yeah. I'm obsessed with the door, master of this domain, <laughs> Tara Haddon. That's, that's epic, I love it. <laughs> Look at this beautiful restaurant. So we're just kind of a late 80s, early 90s themed pizzeria. That's what we love. As okay. a 90s baby, I'm all here for it. And you're a 90s baby as well. Barely. 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 At 26 years old, Tara already owns two locations of Zaza's Pizza and Wigs, a brand she founded. The name is a nod to the infamous Joey Zaza from The Godfather Part 3. Here, Tara is putting her own spin on a classic pizza shop with some very non-traditional offerings. 
So these are all of our slice pies. We'll usually keep like the basics and stuff that people come in to try, like of course pepperoni, cheese, right. sausage. And then we kind of have some of our weird stuff going on, of course. Pickles. Our pickle pie, it, believe it or not, is one of our best selling pizzas. No way. Tara started working in pizza when she was 16, honing her skills at local pizzerias before meeting her mentor, Mike Bausch of Andalini's Pizza, a small pizza empire in Tulsa. Mike and his brother were in and out of the restaurants all the time, and he came in and he saw me throwing dough, and every time he came in, that's what he saw me doing. So he was like, I, you're good at this, aren't you? I'm like, mm. Good was an understatement. Mike recognized that Tara had a natural talent for throwing dough, so he started teaching her some basic acrobatic tricks. Yup, this is a real sport. Professional pizza acrobats spin, toss, and twirl dough at competitions around the world. During three to five minute choreographed routines, they're judged on the number of tricks they perform and their difficulty. One of the most well-known pizza competitions is the Pizza Games at Las Vegas' Pizza Expo, where pros from around the globe gather each spring. This year, Tara is competing in her fifth games. As usual, she'll be one of the only female competitors. I didn't even learn what <laughs> pizza throwing was. I saw this guy that I worked with at like my first ever pizzeria kind of doing it. And they had told me about Pizza Expo. And at that time, it was just like a dream to go to Pizza Expo. Tara has come a long way since a disappointing last place finish at her first pizza games. Reflecting on that time, she says her head and heart were elsewhere grieving the loss of her mother, the woman who sparked her love for cooking as a child. I just kind of fell into like making food and stuff at home with my mom. Her, my grandma, long line of like women who cook and making recipes and that was kind of what we would leave like down to our kids, but right. it was just cookbooks. When Tara returned to Vegas the following year, she had a new purpose. I made the reason I was going there worth everything that I kind of put into it. When I placed first in the preliminaries, it was such like a powerful moment. It actually fell on the anniversary of when she had passed away. So I was like, oh my gosh, like this is because of you, like you helped me. <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of at that moment where I was like, everything is like paid off. When Tara's not wowing crowds, she's busy making some of Tulsa's most unique pizzas. So we headed to her prep kitchen where 500 pounds of dough gets made into over 1,000 pies every day. So our dough, we're gonna start with a local uh, milled flour. And then we of course got our yeast, salt, and olive oil. Great. Best way to kind of start dough is by activating the yeast. Okay. So we usually activate it in some hot water, warm water, like 101 is usually ideal. It's gonna smell really nice in here very soon. Yes. So give it a whisk. Great. And then once we kind of wake the yeast up in here, we're gonna put it to sleep in some ice water. Your turn. <laughs> it's cold. That's how you check your pain tolerance. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's funny that the whole point of this is to put the yeast to sleep when I'm feeling more awake than ever with how cold this is on my fingers. Now this is pretty bubbly, so we got a nice little foamy layer in there. And then we'll just throw this in with our flour. We already got some dough that's been mixing this morning. The dough Tara uses for tricks doesn't have any yeast, so it stays dense like Play-Doh. Back at Zaza's, it was time to learn some tossing tricks Woo! with a few new friends. Good job, good job, guys. Each month, Tara holds a pizza making and throwing class for kids and parents at her shop. I'm a little older than her typical student, but I could not wait to join in on the fun. We're gonna take it across our, our body. Okay. And then throw it up. <laughs> and then throw it up in the air. Yeah, just like that. One, two, three. <laughs> I just kind of spin it like on my finger, like <laughs> like my knuckles almost. Okay. Well, you have to get it going first. Yeah. Right? The best trick I show people okay. that's pretty easy is throwing it behind your shoulder. Okay. If show you me that. put your arm out, you know, like you're a little teapot, short okay. stout, you know, and then you just look that way and throw it. It's like doing a cartwheel. I didn't. <laughs> it's not around around the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Just like an effortless. She's effortless. She's a world champion. With the competition in Vegas fast approaching, I joined Tara and her mentor, Mike, for a practice session. Pleasure to meet you. Mike, you're the whole reason why Tara got into this, so can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Well, I'm a dork for pizza and her dorkage has just latched on to us and it's exciting. It's about the love of pizza making and this is a representation of that. So are we <laughs> gonna get a chance to see the full routine right now? I mean, I guess, I guess we can do it. Tara uses silicone doughs to practice. They create the feel of acrobatic pizza dough without the floury mess. Transitioning from hand to hand is what will give her more points. Okay. And then going behind the back seamlessly. Some people will really lean into one trick and try and make it last 30 seconds. Okay. She's going a trick per second. Oh, oh. There it is. Okay. That's the Tara that Classic. Is. That's her signature move. Unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> Hi, girl. Woo! There you go. Here at Zaz's Pizza in Tulsa, pizza acrobat Tara Hatton is making waves with her signature moves and unique pies. I couldn't wait to make one of her fan favorites, a chicken and waffle pizza. So you're essentially taking the Zaza's pizza and wings and you're creating a, a child with them of chicken and waffle pizza. <laughs> yes, they are all my precious pizza baby. We love, we love. This pizza uses a blend of margarine and butter as a base on top of the olive oil. So this doesn't have a sauce on it, does it? No, it's just gonna be like the oil on the butter. Okay, the so. olive oil is just gonna be like a sheen to protect the dough itself. And then the butter will kind of melt and create these little soup pools that'll be perfect for when we put our waffles on. And it'll just like soak up all that butter. Baby, and baby is speaking my delicious. language. With our buttery base ready, Tara and I add boneless chicken wings and Mott's cheese. Then it was time for something sweet. Our secret little ingredient, we're gonna add yes, some syrup before. Look at this, it's so wrong, it's right. <laughs> so a little bit of a Just swirl. A swirl. So it kind of bakes into the base and stuff and almost like caramelizes on there. The pizza bakes at 555 degrees until the crust turns golden brown before the final topping. It's smelling so good in here. It smells breakfast. like breakfast. <laughs> Jinx. Oh, we can't Wait, forget the Mike's Hot the Honey. most important part. Drizzle me timbers. Pizza time. Cheers. Cheers. So you get a combination of crunch and fluff with a little bit of that salty cheese. And, and then, then it's the, just hot. And then the hot honey. It's good. It slaps. <laughs> Of course, I couldn't leave Zaza's without trying the famous pickle pizza. I could see a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle eating this right now. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers with your hot slice of pizza. Oh my gosh. It's got that punchy vinegar pickle taste and the cheese mellows it out. I never knew that a pickle on a pizza would work so well. It does. I don't like pineapple on pizza, but like pickle on pizza, mm -hmm. that's my move. Before heading back to New York, I had one more pizza party to attend. My friend and owner of Zaza's Pizza Wings, Tara Hatton. Tara's routine wowed friends and fans of all ages who came to wish her well before the big competition. Yeah! 
taking it all the way back to where you first began in the kitchen with your mom and grandma mm -hmm. to where you are today. If they could see you now, what do you think they would say? I would like to say that they are definitely proud. I don't think they would expect what I'm doing now compared to where my like original game plan was in life. I think they would realize it's not just pizza to me. It is my life, it is my world, and I love it. <laughs>Tara plays second in the Masters Acrobatic Competition in Vegas. And she can't wait to come back and compete for the title again next year. Pizza is the ultimate comfort food. With so many unique styles, sauces, and toppings, it's truly impossible to go wrong. As pizza has evolved over the years, so have the chefs behind this iconic Italian staple. Whether they're cooking pies, running front of house, or going all out on stage, the women making pizza today are creating more space at the table for everyone. Mm. Butchery is seen as this really large scale brute force Thing, and it takes a lot of physical strength, but a lot of it is also really intricate and small kind of meditative moments. Sausage making being one of those things. The color is still really nice. Yeah, it looks beautiful. I'm Karen Nicoletti. I'm a fourth generation butcher and co-founder of Seymour Meats and Veggies. <laughs> I want butchers in the future to not be scared of people eating less meat. I just think that we need to get a little bit more creative about our job. Everyone, the food is ready. The mission really is to make it easier and more fun for people to eat well. It turns out that adding vegetables, making that meat stretch farther, democratizes good meat, if you will, uh, makes it more available to more people. They're just so good. <laughs> my family's history in butchery started uh, with my great-great-grandfather. He was a cattle merchant in Russia. That was where my great-grandpa started working in the meat industry. And then he opened a shop in the north end of Boston in the 1940s with some of his family. When my grandpa was 13, him and his brother, Bobby, started working in the shop and eventually took it over. Is that you? That's me, yeah. that's Bob. I'm Seymour Celeste, and I'm a retired butcher. Both of us went to work helping my dad in the meat market. My brother and I were partners until the day he passed away a couple years ago. This was the store. Wow. 65 Salem Street. I had three daughters. I never thought that uh, my girls would be interested, and they weren't. My daughters used to bring the children into my office for me to take care of them while they went out and did things. And uh, Cara always wanted to go into the smelly room. I was, out of my sisters and my cousins, probably the most curious about what they were doing in the shop. Growing up, I always wanted to sort of like peek behind the curtain and see. I graduated in 2008, the economy collapsed. <laughs> I was working at a restaurant as a baker and one of the owners who also had a grandfather who was a butcher was like, if you ever want to do some like light butchery work, breaking down chickens and pork shoulders and stuff, let me know. So I started doing that and it sort of like sparked an interest in me. So I started apprenticing for free. I did that for about a year and then left to go butcher full time. I remember calling my papa, Seymour, when I got my first apprenticeship. I could tell that he was hoping like it was something that didn't stick. Well, I said, you know, this is the, the funniest story, the funniest joke. You're, you're joking with me and everything else. And she said, no. I really have my entire working life worked with my hands and I enjoy that 
much more. I trusted her and believed in her. As a matter of fact, I gave her some of my tools. This is um, Papa's Seymour's honing steel that he gave me. As soon as I started butchering full time, I gravitated toward sausage making immediately. And I realized pretty early on that I had like, hit on an idea. As much as I believe in regenerative agriculture and all of that, there's just no way to sustainably eat meat every single night of the week. So I started sneaking a lot of vegetables into my sausages. I had set out to make 40 pounds of sausages and after I'd mixed it all together, I weighed out the mix and it was like 70 something pounds. I had essentially doubled my meat <laughs> by adding vegetables to it. When I was working at Foster's and just like couldn't physically keep up with the demand was when I realized that it definitely was a scalable idea. It's been the last two years of working nonstop trying to get this to market. Uh, I went to close to 100 co-packers asking them if they would help me and every single one of them said no because what we're doing is more complicated. We finally found one co-packer outside of uh, Kansas City, Missouri, the Phantasmas, and flew out to go see them and they were like, sure, we'll try it. Hey! Hi! <laughs> How's it going? Good, how are you? Oh, oh I'm Mario! <laughs> Hi! I really owe everything to them because they saw something in me and they saw something in my idea that they thought was worth taking a risk on. I was making Lou and Mario like <laughs> peel beets and dice them in the thing that makes bologna. I believe it was the challenge. Uh, we never done sausage with vegetables and meat combined at the amounts uh, that she was looking for. We immediately saw uh, the drive that she had, the passion she had about the sausages she made. We've always wanted to work with a sausage queen. Help me prep some vegetables. We went back and forth and back and forth about the name for a long time. We had a few different iterations that just didn't stick, and I always wanted it to be Seymour. These are cooking up fantastic, <laughs> huh? God, look at those. They're just cooking up. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. I love her, and I said to her, no, 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 don't call it Seymour Meets Vegetable. I wanted her to call it something like Kara's Kitchen because it really, you know, it's her. And of course I am humbled by what she did. And uh, um, I'm very emotional about that. We are all obsessed with Seymour. We love him and use him as a model of, of positivity and gratitude. Yeah. That delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So this is about honoring my whole family. The truth of the matter is, Kara revolutionized the uh, sausage business. Make no mistake, this was not an easy process and I almost quit many, many, many times. Kara went to Whole Foods and they bought her product immediately. I mean, I can lie awake at night thinking how remarkable it is that she was able to achieve that, and I'm very proud of her. Butchering is a really, really difficult job with very little financial payoff, but I would not do anything differently. Women make really good butchers and really good cooks, really good chefs. I think the more of us that are in this industry, the better. I understand what it takes to accomplish what she's accomplished. And let me tell you, it is no easy feat. And it didn't happen overnight for Kara. And it's just the beginning as far as I'm concerned. <laughs>
There are a few things that make me happier than physically farming. Big, sweaty, kind of brutal tasks. I think I've always known in some form that this farm and this work around connecting people and land needed to exist. <laughs> you want to be free of your anxiety. I think the wind likes it. <laughs>My name is Leah Penniman and I'm the founding co-director at Soul Fire Farm in Grafton, New York. Soul Fire Farm is a black indigenous led community farm that's dedicated to ending racism in the food system and training up the next generation of activist farmers. Between 1 and 2% of farms are black owned, which is down from a peak of 14% of black owned farms in 1910. And this is not because black folks don't want to farm. This is because of a whole legacy of discrimination of institutional racism. I grew up in a small rural town called Ashburnham, Massachusetts. I'm the oldest of three and we were, for most of our childhood, the only brown kids in our entire school and we experienced just a lot of social exclusion and racial bullying. It ranged from taunting, you know, being called names, to assumptions about our intelligence. The land and the forest were a salvation for me. I attended every single farming conference that I could afford to go to, but by my late teens, early 20s, I started to get disillusioned because I'd look around at these farming conferences and all the presenters were white and I looked around and there was only a handful of people of color. A mentor of mine said something so important to me at that time. You know, she was just like, look, don't give up. I know that right now it seems like you're out of place, but remember that our ancestors have been farmers for millennia and that our ancestors built the agricultural system of this country on their backs. I was really grateful that she was there and encouraged me to stick with it. My partner Jonah and I were living in the south end of Albany, New York with our then infant children, Nishima and Emmett, and despite our master's degrees and over a decade of farming experience, found it impossible to get fresh food for our children. There were no supermarkets, no farmers markets, no available community garden plots. The only food is a corner store, a liquor store, and a McDonald's. This system of segregation uh, is termed by the government a food desert. To us, there's nothing natural about apartheid. Um, so we call it what it is, it's food apartheid. It comes out of a legacy of redlining and housing discrimination, of divestment from communities of color, and has resulted in the situation today where if you're white, you're four times as likely to have a supermarket on your block than if you're black. You're more likely to have diabetes, heart disease, and other diet-related illnesses. Not because you don't know how to eat, but because there you know, is a scarcity of affordable, culturally appropriate quality food um, that's accessible. And so we work to establish a community garden right on the corner plot near our home. So when our neighbors found out that we knew how to farm, they encouraged us to start the farm for the people. And the idea for Soul Fire Farm was born. We purchased the land in 2006 and it took us four years to transform this marginal, degraded and vacant land into human habitat and suitable farmland. And we opened the farm in 2011 with a small food distribution program that went right to our neighbors in the South End. A couple thousand folks roll through here every year to attend our farm training programs. The rest of you are just going to contemplate um, and pray for the strawberries, happy, happy um, homemaking. There are eight of us working here on the farm. We have an amazing team. We have a number of day-long programs and week-long camps for youth who are interested in farming and a whole lot of community days and workshops on particular skills. It's really whatever our community is asking us for, we do our best to provide. Our most popular is the week-long BIPOC FIRE, stands for Black Indigenous People of Color, Farming in Relationship with Earth. We have folks coming from 37 states and three countries this year, Spanish and English speakers, young and old. And we spend a week together uh, doing hands on the land training. Uh, we have a number of courses on business management, marketing, uh, as well as crop planning. If you count everyone who's gone through any program, we have over 10,000 alumni. We provide ongoing and forever mentorship. We hook folks up with jobs, uh, land, fellowships, and other opportunities. You know, land is the place where the lynchings, the beatings, the enslavement, the sharecropping took place. And so 
there's no way to escape the trauma associated with that. And so a big part of what I and we are trying to do at Soulfire is to reach back across the narrative of the hundreds of years of land-based oppression to Cleopatra's you know, compost piles and the raised beds of the Ovambo people in Namibia to reach back to the work of Dr. George Washington Carver, creating regenerative agriculture and Dr. Booker T. Watley with Farm to Table. So to really reclaim the dignity of it is super important. If we can't feed ourselves, we can't truly be free. All right, so everyone who's part of the tour, just come a little bit get started. We're gonna travel around the farm together, get a chance to visit some of the sacred sites, hear the stories, and you can ask your questions as well as we go. So follow me this way. Community Farm Day is our monthly public event where volunteers come from all around the region to share in the labor of the land, to have a potluck lunch, and then to participate in a tour and Q&A session. It's the one time that the farm's open to the public. Now what's very important with strawberries is that their meristem or growth point is right here. So what do you think happens if you bury that? Drowning. It will not grow. <laughs> <laughs> we have a bunch of different teams working on different tasks, um, including transplanting the fall strawberries, uh, cleaning and curing the garlic and onions, harvesting potatoes, removing some of the materials and supplies that we're done with for the season. And Jonah will be working with some volunteers, many of whom have traveled three or four hours just to get here today. We have a lot of teens that come through the farm and not all of them are gonna be farmers, but they see folks who look like them following their dreams and being their own bosses and running their own institutions. What matters to me is that they can see a wider vision of what's possible for their own lives. This is what we're trying to get yeah. to, so it's great to see it in person. Yeah, it's a goal. It makes my heart flutter. <laughs> like, honestly, I just like, I'm so inspired. Please help all the teams clean up and put everything away. We do doorstep delivery of vegetables, eggs, pastured meat, and herbs, and folks can actually pay for that using their EBT benefits. The vast majority of people say that having those vegetables has made a huge difference in their health, whether that's a reduction in you know, blood pressure or cholesterol or overall sense of well-being. And especially for our lower income members, many of them say if it wasn't for those vegetables, they'd literally be eating ramen and boiled pasta and canned foods because they simply don't have anywhere to get, you know, fresh food like we offer. There's nothing that makes me happier than seeing our alumni farm. So for example, Dallas Robinson in North Carolina uh, just recently opened the Harriet Tubman farm. Folks like Keisha Cameron outside of Atlanta, Georgia at High Hog Farm. Fundamentally, I wanna create a different kind of educational environment for young people that I never got to experience where you know, you can go ahead and be proud to be a soil nerd and you also will have your culture uplifted, your heritage uplifted and be affirmed for who you are and and encouraged to pursue your wildest dreams. I see Leah and I like stand there and I listen to her and I'm just in complete awe. Like, like I feel a physical reaction in my body and I just want to like be quiet and listen. I've had mixed feelings in the past around doing public speaking. It always seemed like the real work was here on the farm and then I'd go out and just talk about the real work. And something shifted for me when I witnessed how many people who heard our talks then went on to join a program to learn how to farm, or did something like give away their land to a black farmer. It's really an honor and pleasure to be here with all of you. Um, I feel excited, I feel deeply pleased to talk about two of my favorite things, which are the earth and the ancestors and what they want us to be up to. Go caps, you're gonna grow so strong. So we wrote this song. Our waiting list for our training programs is years long. Mm -hmm. Our people are yearning, right? Mm -hmm. Some of us confuse the scene of the crime, which was the land, with the crime. Mm -hmm. But the fact is the land has always had our back. In fact, we survived because of that connection with the land. My hope is that we spread our love, our knowledge, our resources out through the network of black and brown farmers so that 
you know, 10, 20 years from now, people will be like, wait, what's Soul Fire again? Because there's literally right around the corner a black and brown lead teaching farm so that it becomes so commonplace that we have to remind our children about a time when all the land was white owned and a time when all the farmers were exploited because that's become such a distant memory. <laughs> Good morning, guys. I'm here at Vermilion. It's a restaurant in downtown Chicago. They specialize in Latin and Indian food. I'm going to tell you about all these mouth-watering dishes in just a minute. But first, I want to introduce you to a group of four women restaurateurs who formed a sisterhood, and they're helping hundreds of women across the country, keeping their women-owned restaurants open. Plus, we're going to talk about a way that you can help some of these restaurants in your own cities as well. In one word, what does it take to be a woman restaurateur? Guts. I think a sense of humor. Resilience. Flexibility. For these four women, the COVID crisis crippled their livelihoods. They struggled to keep their dining rooms open as restaurants shut down in cities across the country. Seven of the ten restaurants on my block are closed. Rohini Day, mother of two and owner of Vermilion Restaurant in Chicago, thought COVID might shatter 18 years of work she put into a restaurant. Four months was a complete abyss of trying to figure out, do I even want to be in this industry? Given the safety issues, given the trauma to our staff, all laid off, trying our best to support them. But she took action, creating Let's Talk. What is Let's Talk? Let's Talk is an action-led movement of women business owners who own restaurants. And our goal is to help each other survive this crisis and to grow in the long term. What started as a small group of women restaurant owners in the Windy City now includes more than 350 female restaurant owners nationwide. I'm just blown away at what we've done in this small little time. I spoke with Rohini and Let's Talk members in Boston, Atlanta and Oakland. How many of you at any point thought you might lose your restaurants? Everybody? It's just, I never thought this could happen where we would be in this type of position. And to be honest, I still am not out of the woods. I just keep moving forward and hoping for the best. During the pandemic, an estimated 110,000 restaurants closed for good. That's 17% of the nation's eateries. And according to the National Restaurant Association, some 2.4 million restaurant employees are still out of work. I had no idea if it was going to reopen again. May German and her husband Nelson had opened a new restaurant in Oakland just days before the pandemic hit. Hitting our one year anniversary, but our dining room has only been open for 14 days. We were really thrilled to join Let's Talk. For these women, Let's Talk serves as a resource and a sisterhood to share ideas for how to keep going. 
that learning from each other is such a core part of let's talk so every call that we have we walk away with 10 to 15 different ideas we also tried everything under the sun you know we sold meal kits we did virtual cooking demos and cocktail classes how important is it to have other people that you can lean on the restaurant industry for years has been male dominated um so to be you know, a woman in this industry, you're already coming in knowing that you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. The camaraderie that we have together has only helped to, I think, position us and make us stronger. For women like Deborah and Jen, this organization has been a lifeline. It was a new village for me and a village surrounded around women restaurateurs, which I have never had. We have cross color lines, diversity is everywhere, cultures, from all over the world are, are in existence. Gonna make sure each other gets out of this okay. Hey guys, you can help women-owned restaurants all across the country by purchasing a meal through Let's Talk. You'll have it on International Women's Day, which is coming up Monday, March 8th. And uh, you can find out all those details on today.com. I wanna bring in Rohini Day. She's here. This is the founder of Let's Talk and also the owner of this restaurant. Rohini, phones are starting to ring already. I love it. Tell us about all this food. Where does it come from and how do people get a taste of it? Vicky, so lovely to be here. This is just an example of what we're doing in Chicago for our International Women's Day dinner. Anything from my Indian Latin to Mexican to Vietnamese to Ethiopian, the gamut. Now, can you imagine a surprise multi-restaurant tasting menu led by your leading women restaurateurs, not just in Chicago, mm -hmm. but in nine different cities? I mean, what could be a better celebration? In pair with a conversation with us on power and positive collaboration. Rohini, when do people have to order by? And give us an idea of what's the menu starting price. Yeah, so the price ranges by city and it starts at $55 for a course of four, a surprise dinner, to anywhere to a course of 10 for 150. And so this is gonna be an extravagant way to support your women restaurateurs and feast. I love it, and they'll get the meal on Monday. So Rohini, before I let you go, there is one more thing, if you don't mind, um, could you take the lid off of this little silver dish here, and then could you just read what's on the card for me, please? Absolutely. I did want to remind your viewers to please order by tomorrow. Oh, okay, <laughs> tomorrow get those orders in. Now, now this is something that's been served by today to yes. us, so I have no idea. And so I'm just gonna read it. Yes, please. Uber Eats was so inspired by your work that they decided to make an initial 10,000 contribution to the National Restaurant Association's Educational Foundation to support Let's Talk and women-owned restaurants like yours. Unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's, That's the kind of tangible contribution we need. We urge all your viewers to back us, find us, Aww. support us. Thank you so much. For you are so us and welcome. It has been a pleasure, and I know how hard the restaurant industry has been hit. And as we talked about, you know, half of people know a restaurant that they love has shut down during this pandemic. So order takeout, order catering, and support, especially for women-owned restaurants. Thank you so much.
joining us this morning, Chef Elena Besser. She is going to make something awesome as we get back to the routine looking for those easy and affordable weeknight dinner ideas. And to cook along with us, just scan that QR code. You can order the ingredients with one click, add them to your cart, and schedule pickup or delivery. Elena, good morning. Good morning, my sous chef. How are is, you today? I am well, thank you. Good. For putting me right in my place. Absolutely. I love it. Are you ready to get to chow? I, I like a woman who's ready to go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let me know how to do How did you pick this as an easy meal? Okay, so zucchini is in season right now. Yeah. Therefore, it's going to taste so much more delicious than it otherwise would. And it's going to be more affordable because we have a lot of zucchini available. So I figured okay. let's take zucchini and let's turn it into a luscious, creamy sauce that doesn't have any added now, I said you jokingly backstage. I said, why, did you, why do you cut the zucchini in this particular size? Why are they so small? And you actually had a great answer for that. There's a reason for it. Yes, there is a reason for it. So the reason why is because the smaller you cut the zucchini, the faster it's going to cook. And listen, we're trying to get food on the table as quickly as we right. can. We're busy people, so we want to make sure that we cut it into smaller pieces. These are about a quarter of an inch thick. We're going to add those dice pieces to a sheet tray, half of them, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take the other half and put them into a bowl. So these just get a nice drizzle of olive oil and mm -hmm. we're going to hit them with a little bit of salt to awaken that flavor. Yep. The higher you go when you season, the more surface area oh, that's you a thing. coverage you All get. Right. Highly recommend. Look so that, yeah, yeah. Sprinkle, make it sprinkle. rain. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take some garlic cloves and we're quartering them. So here's the thing. You could smash them if you want, but I know a lot of people get intimidated by that action. So I figured let's just quarter Quartering. them. Put them right into our bowl, and then we're going to add it with some sauteed onions. And this is going to go at about a medium high heat mm -hmm. uh, until that zucchini is nice and softened. You're going to want to give it a cover so you get that. How long is that roughly? Like 10 bottom. minutes? Yeah, about 10 minutes. Yeah. You get the caramelization from the bottom, but at the same time, it's softening the zucchini, and we are left. I like where with this is headed. This I can do everything you've done mixture. so far. It's oh, not out of my reach. Really yeah. Okay, and another thing that maybe also isn't out of your reach for me personally white wine. as well. White wine my yep. friend. So to add even more depth of flavor and to pick up any of those brown bits that we get on the bottom, um, also known as the fond, we are going to continue cooking that. It's going to infuse with flavor and we want to cook it at that medium high heat until it reduces down. It's delicious is and luxurious. Is this the sauce? Are you making the sauce? Or is this, this is just the like, sauce okay. that we're oh, making while well, those are roasting How's the in the sauce oven. Taste? This, this is delicious. amazing. It tastes like, like it. creamy. It does. Doesn't it? No cream. It's no, it's cream. no cream. No cream at all. It's wow. just so creamy and silky. So the and reason why after you cook it, you blend it? After you cook it, you blend it. And Al, you make a great point. The reason why we're getting that nice brightness is because once we have transferred that reduced uh, situation that we got over here to a blender, we're adding in the zest of a lemon. That gives us our brightness. Mm -hmm. And then we are also adding in some fresh basil. Mm -hmm. You know what I like that's not in here? I'm glad what? it's not as eggplant, because I like zucchini, but I don't like <laughs> Oh, eggplant. well, there you go. Good. I'm happy we didn't use that's eggplant right. then. So good. And then a little bit of our it. pasta water, and that gives us even more creaminess oh. and even more of a starchy component. That's, that's probably so where it's coming from, you got the it? pasta oh, water. Yeah. How's yeah. it like going it. over there? Oh, you got good. It? No, I'm we only had about two minutes left, so I'm going to take my shot here. We're going to take our pasta. You can use any noodle that you want. This is is, as the Today Show team made sure I pronounced properly, Pockery. Pockery. We have our oh. Italian, so we want to make sure we're doing it properly. Oh, Shout no. out to like Anthony so and Katie. And we are adding that directly into mm -hmm. this gorgeous blended sauce. By the way, can I just say for school nights, if we were making this in the daily household, we might do this sand sauce and just do it with a little butter and cheese for the kids. So yes, yeah. delicious. And then, and then and hype it up for the adults. Exactly. Can you use a different pasta? You could mm -hmm. use any pasta you want. You could use this rigatoni. Really I mm -hmm. You could use penne. I like fusilli. something that has a tube. Yes, fusilli. That would catch mm. the sauce beautifully. Great suggestion. Wow, that's We're going to finish mm -hmm. it up with a little bit of that fresh lemon juice from the lemon, lemon that we juice. have reserved that's over it. here. And you can add a little pasta water as you go to get it to a nice, luxurious consistency. And last but certainly not least, we are going to top it with no some giant pads of butter. No what is that? Cream. What do you know no, but it top. feels like it is. It's it crazy. Feels like we a are cream. adding some pistachios, oh, pistachios. Oh, pistachios. Ooh, some Sicilian pistachios. Like pistachios. Oh, We've got some done fresh it again. basil, oh, yeah. that roasted zucchini. So we get those crispy bits. We get really zucchini two ways. Yeah. Dinner like this. Yeah. We're starting off with some gorgeous thick cut bacon. Boom. Anytime there's bacon in a recipe, I'm a yes. happy gal. So we are just going to slice this bacon on up. We're actually making a sweet corn mac and cheese for 
for everyone that's wondering. Oh. Um, and what I like to do whenever I'm cutting like pancetta or bacon or whatever, I'll put uh. it in the fridge or the freezer right. before slicing it, mm. so it just makes it easier oh, yeah. to cook. I actually exactly. started using scissors. Really? <laughs> that is also yes. a yes. great tip. Because I, I sometimes can't get the knife through because it's so fatty. Right? But. Exactly. Scissors, they'll get the job done. Mm. Also okay. great for cutting up herbs for garnish. Uh -huh. yeah. Good point. Okay, so, so we're going to render this. We want to make sure that this is cooking at like a medium low heat. We mm. don't want it to be too high because it could cause the bacon to burn and stay a little chewy. We want it mm. to be really crisp and delicious. Right. So this, what's in season right now? We corn. got a lot of corn. <laughs> yes. And it is so delicious. It's so sweet. And it actually has a lot of great starch in it. So we, and that's going to allow us to get a really creamy sauce without mm -hmm. creating a bechamel base, which is oh. traditional of a mac and cheese. Right. So we are putting it with the bottom down right into the bowl mm -hmm. and slicing it off of the cob. Okay. And you can keep that cob uh, for later, which I will show you what we're going to do with the cob oh. as well. Some people make uh, a stock out of it. Yeah. Sense. Exactly. You can make a stock out of the cobs. Oh. Al, you always know what's up in the kitchen. Yeah. I respect that. About I don't know you. much else. Okay. <laughs> so we have cut off that corn. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take that residual bacon fat that yeah. we have. That adds that flavor. Liquid gold, baby. Exactly. You know it. And we're going to take some shallots that we just grated mm -hmm. on a box grater. We're going to mix those up. If you didn't have shallots, could you use onion? Yeah, absolutely. You could uh, use onion. You could use leek. You could add a little extra good. garlic if you want. Mm -hmm. And then a little chili flake for some some heat. This okay. you can keep out if you want as well. You know, if you're sensitive to heat, don't worry about right. it. And then, of course, once that's sautéed down, we add that corn in and sauté it up. Hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Your kitchen at this point is going to be smelling amazing. It smells great already. And then we will take that mixture All and that. transfer it into a blender. Oh. So this blender, uh, it just has the mixture along with our pasta water, which mm -hmm. is another liquid gold. I call right. this unicorn juice because it has this. <laughs> magical thing where it creates a really nice starchy component which will coat that pasta mm -hmm. and give us oh. a luxurious thick sauce. And I notice you have some Parmesan. Is that yes. Too? Oh, you know it. Okay. So you can use pecorino or parm. Pecorino will give you a little bit of a saltier experience. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can only find parm, that works too. And we are now making our sauce. So at a low heat oh. or even off the heat, depending on how hot your pan already is, you're going to transfer back back and forth between our cheese, a little uh, bit of pasta mm -hmm. water, and then we're going to add in my good pal cheddar. Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> always better it. with cheddar. It's always better with cheddar. You know it. So we're adding a little bit at a time and continuing to mix because mm -hmm. we want the sauce to emulsify and get creamy. Right. If you dump it all in at once, it could break. So, so just be meantime, careful with that. Boiling your pasta. Yes. In the meantime, we've been boiling our pasta. We have taken a little bit of that pasta water to add to our sauce as we're cooking it up. Right. And I even took some of those corn cobs that we had oh, and yeah. popped them into the water. And what that's going to do is it's going to further infuse that mm. corn flavor That's into cool. the pasta itself. Okay. And then you're going to take the sauce and the pasta together? Exactly. So once that cheesy sauce has melted and mm. emulsified, we're going to add that pasta directly into it, give it a nice toss, add any more so uh, pasta water it. that we need, and we're garnishing with more cheese, that crispy bacon, and some fresh chives. Oh, it's so baby. good. This is and like... it's time to eat. All you know right. what I love about this? Because it's salty, but you have a sweetness without oh. like mm. sugar right? or anything. You know? Fantastic. Oh, I'm and the so corn happy. made it creamier, like Elena without all Besser. the. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. Very good. Wow.
and it's an exciting day because we are launching a full Today Table cooking show with some of our favorite chefs all over on Today All Day. And we have one of them with us, Chef Elena Besser is with good us. Good morning. Good morning, good morning my friend. Congrats. Thanks. Yeah. I'm seriously so pumped about this series. I think everyone is going to love it. Such fun recipes. Mm -hmm. And it premieres and easy. today. Yes. And it's easy recipes. I love that. Well, it yes. smells so fresh in here. I mean, there's just so many herbs mm. that go into this recipe of yours. Yes, there are. Uh, herb quiz, quick quiz. Al, can you name all these herbs? Uh, dill, chive, uh, uh, mint, uh, basil, uh, parsley. Yes, you got them all. Okay. You got them Yay. all. Yay! Sometimes I have to taste parsley to so make yes, sure it's not so taste. I love so it. This is such a fun way to use all of those beautiful herbs that are in season, coming in season right now. I know mm -hmm. our gardens are starting to bloom. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a really easy herb pesto okay. that has a lot of spinach in it as the foundation. So and we should mention people can shop along right now. If you just yes. scan that QR code, mm -hmm. you can get the menu. I don't know the verbiage for it. I don't have the verbiage, but you can get all the ingredients. It takes you right to Walmart and get some and then boom, yeah. ship yeah. them right Cooking. to your house. Wow. So this is a really easy herbaceous sauce and it's going to have some lemon herbaceous. zest and lemon juice in it. Mm, so what we're going to do you. is we're just going to take a lemon. This is a rasp grater, also known as a microplane, mm -hmm. and you just zest you have one that of those, right? beautiful I, right. zest into <laughs> it them. at the restaurant that I cooked one. at. We would get in trouble if we sliced a lemon before zesting it because oh, yeah. there's so much flavor mm. in the uh, zest of the lemon itself. Mm. Okay. So you want to stop at the way. Yeah, you can pre zest, but just make sure. There. Yeah, make sure you put it in your refrigerator in like an airtight okay. baggie okay. or you cover it up. Okay. Then Smells what you're good. also going to do once you've zested them, you'll slice them in half, take a citrus press. Pop that in. Contrary to popular belief, you actually want to put it cut side down to get mm -hmm. the most juice out okay. of it. Mm -hmm. This has one garlic clove in it, too, so we will typically take all of these lemons, pop okay. them in it there. So good. But for time, I want to make sure we get to all of the different steps. <laughs> okay. Then you're going to take a ton of fresh spinach, okay. several handfuls. You want to have a really nice high speed blender or mm -hmm. a food processor. Take all of those herbs that we have over there. You oh, can use any variety in. that you want. Um, and the main thing here is you just want to go with soft herbs that are going to easily break down. Okay. Okay. You're also going to add in some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil for extra flavor mm -hmm. and we're going to pop that in blend it on up and then you are left with this beautiful bright green Yay, sauce which yeah. is right over here so Could this you just everyone can see arugula instead of the spinach yes, to a, pepper it up I mm. love that suggestion you absolutely could use arugula you could use any green I love the nuttiness so the peppery taste this of the This is such arugula. a good idea to get rid of those extra herbs right? in your garden cuz I did that last year I had all these herbs and I just had nothing sure. to do with them It's the best and the it's ones so that are easy kind of on their last leg Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna throw in there. Absolutely, freshen them up. So we have rigatoni right here. Okay. This is my favorite pasta shape. It catches all that saucy goodness. Mm -hmm. You're just going to take all that rigatoni, transfer it right into this big bowl of sauce. And what's fun is you can just serve it directly in this bowl. So oh, it's nice. all going to come together right in this And the extra saucy pasta goodness. water. Yes, the pasta water is yeah. key. We really want pasta water here. I call it unicorn sauce. I know that's ridiculous. <laughs> but the reason why is because it's magical, my friends. Okay. This has all of that starchy goodness that's going mm -hmm. to really allow the it. sauce to stick to the pasta itself rather than running right off. Mm -hmm. So we are just going to continue mm -hmm. tossing this up. And a fun little thing that I like to do other than adding a lot of cheese, because uh -huh. I'm from the Midwest and I can't help myself. <laughs> Wait, I need as much cheese. Chicago. Oh, that's right. We talked about Born that. and raised and we're both Wildcats. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, are you throwing dates in there? Okay, oh, this is a dates. crazy twist. Oh, so I actually, I, half of my family lives in Israel, so I love eating dates. Oh my God. Love them, love to integrate them into mm. anything. And a little bite of sweetness. These taste like concentrated maple syrup, if you will. Yes. So I like to add them to the oh top of whatever, uh, of this pasta oh, wow. specifically, oh. but also whatever I'm cooking. Girl. You like it? And then some toasted pine nuts, because a little extra nuttiness. We're happy to have it. And oh. some extra fresh mm. herbs. And oh you know God. what? I'm so happy everyone likes it. What's oh great God. about this, too, is that if you have leftovers the next day, it is delicious cold. It tastes Can like I sing a, your praises? Mm. So you should go to today.com, watch her show, get this food, because sometimes when chefs are here and they cook, there's a little buzz in the studio about how good yeah. it was. With you this morning, everybody was buzzing mm -hmm. about how good this pasta is. And this is another one. And you know what I love so about much. this? Sometimes I find with pesto, it gets monotonous, and I'm eating the pesto, and I'm like, ugh. This mm -hmm. is like, you get a lemony bite, and then yeah. you get a nice crunchy salt, but then the sweetness cleanses your palate and for another looks, salty pesto bite. Yes. Beautiful. So we say That's yes. Oh, that was not such planned. Such great descriptions. Fantastic. I love all of you. It's such Thank a pleasure. Thank you. By the way, if you, you like so dates, 
Rancho Metaluca. Okay. Makes a, it's, a ran, it's a date farm out in California. Spectacular. Really? Okay, got it. <laughs> TV host Elena Besser. She has not one, but two desserts two. that we can make ahead of time. So all you have to do is scan that QR code right at the bottom of the screen. You can cook along with us with one click, select get ingredients, and then you can schedule that pickup or Perfect. that delivery. Elena, good morning. Good morning. You. Good morning. Good morning. Always good morning. great to be with you. Pumpkin mini cheesecakes. You know it. Yum. It's always fun when you have an individual dessert portion and mini versions sure. of desserts just bring me so much joy. So we are changing up the traditional graham cracker crust and we are using ginger snaps to add that autumnal flair. So we have some okay. brown sugar. We've got our ginger snap cookies and we are going to pulse this on up in a food processor. Ooh, can I until, pulse? I love to yes, pulse. Yes, please do. Just just the, what what do you got over there? What is that, butter? Yes, and we've got some melted butter. Feel free to get after that. Oh, once it is all night, keep on going. Yeah. Ooh. And once it is fully the consistency of sand, okay. you're going to stream in. Greg's really having a good time. You're doing great. You're oh, going to stream sorry. in that melted. No, you're doing Keep going, Greg. Keep going. Stream in that melted butter. And it's going to end up looking like wet sand. Then you oh, push yeah. it into the little ram <laughs> exactly. And you take a glass Cute. and press it down to create this little crust. Chanel, if you Honestly, want to try Honestly, I could just eat this by itself. I thought that was brown sugar. <laughs> it, it's a little brown sugar like brown plus sugar. ginger snacks. Oh, that is, yeah. that's good. Oh, right. Right. This is by itself. Right. right, so you do that. And so you do that. You pop that into the oven for about 10 minutes to set. And then we're going to start on our filling. So okay. we have cream cheese. We have brown sugar. We've got white sugar in here. And we are Other going... Side. Yeah, I keep doing that. I know, it's KitchenAid, Elena. What's it's a KitchenAid. Yeah, I things. love KitchenAid. They're the best. <laughs> um, and we're going to whip this on up. Then we're adding in all of our other flavorings. So we've Great. got the cinnamon. Eggs going. That's a warm we got flavor. our eggs. That's a warm we flavor. have oh, ooh, one wow. hand. Hey. Okay. Hey. One more. Let's go. Wow. Okay. Hey. Look one at this more. executive chef right here. There we go. Hey. Oh, man. Oh, in my man. kitchen at home. Look at that. Skills. I love it. And then we're adding a she little bit like of you kosher salt. <laughs> exactly. We're adding in some vanilla extract. And this wouldn't be a pumpkin cheesecake unless we had our pumpkin puree. So you True. could also swap out sweet potato if you want. You pop that in here. You end up having this delicious mixture. Yum. Wait, where do you get that? Is that in a can? Yeah, you can get it in a can. Okay. Let's save the time. You know? Okay. I know, I know. And then we are pouring it into all of our ramekins. It's a nice 
thick, delicious batter. Sam, who doesn't love a good ramekin? No. Well, Pop that in, and then we are going to sure. bake it in the oven. And this is the fun, oh, really awesome. chefy mm. moment here. Okay. And this is what's going to give us that luxurious, creamy texture. We are going to add in water Why? to the bottom. This creates a water bath. So what happens is, instead of that cheesecake cooking too quickly, it's going to slowly poach it, so you get that really delicious, ah. creamy texture. I gotta get your food. And, but wait, Wait, there's more. There's more. Wait, there's more. Also, We're gonna start eating. Have some so please start eating it. We have some brown sugar oh and gosh. butter. We've got pumpkin seeds. We have mm. pecans oh or God. pecans, Ooh. however you All say it. it. And a little bit of salt. Mix it up. We're making Girl. a brittle. Oh my! We That's have this brittle. Ridiculous. And we're topping it with. Oh. Um, some whipped cream that is sweetened with maple syrup. I wasn't expecting this. The fall flavor. It's Isn't so this soft. Good? Yeah, Here's it's a thing. pump. It's Each like a layer is yummy on its own. Like oh, even yay. that right there is yummy. Oh, like, I'm so and it's fun to just snack on the brittle because it comes in I mean. these nice. Wait, we're gonna pieces. talk about the crumble. Oh, we have to talk about the crumble. Okay. Okay. So crumble is such an easy dessert that you can make really far in advance. You can make all of these in advance, by the way. Mm. This you can store in the fridge for up Gosh. to a week, unmold and serve it. And then with the crumble, you could make this oh, and freeze more. it, wrap it on up. This is cranberry and apple crumble. Uh, oh you bake gosh. it in the oven, let it cool completely, wrap it up, put it in your freezer, and then right mm. before you're serving, pop it into the oven at 350 degrees. You're going to put tin foil over it, pour some melted butter over it oh to God. reheat it, Whoa. and then serve it a la mode because always ice cream. Mm. Is there some lemon something in here? What's there's some on? lemon, there's a little orange. If orange isn't your thing, you can just omit the orange. Um, oh, this is but great. I'm happy you guys like it. Crumble's so easy. It's so delicious. It's a crowd pleaser. And what I love about it, not very many dishes. You yeah, make it in the iron. Yeah. You pop it on the table. Oh it looks stunning. And your whole family is going to love it. Cheers to you. Like both. Cheers to you. I know they're both really yummy. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I am going to be in Florida with my family. It'll be fun. It's the first year I'm not cooking in a while. I was going to say, you. You. you deserve to. I was just about to invite you to, to my, uh, my in-laws. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So what are we making this morning? We are oh, making yeah. a spiced apple loaf cake. We are celebrating the bounty of the season with these gorgeous apples. You can use Honeycrisp, you could use Granny Smith, whatever your favorite apple is. And we're going to start by peeling it up and giving it a nice grate on a box grater. Okay. I figured it would be easier to grate it instead of taking all that time to chop. We're doing a lot of chopping yeah. already. Nice yeah, no, so let's, let's make it easy. Watch your fingers. Yeah, be Thank careful. You. Wouldn't that be terrible? Please. No. Happy yeah. to yeah. Craig yeah. Safety only. <laughs> safety <laughs> only. <laughs> Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're taking a bowl of sugar and some oil, uh, adding two room temperature eggs, a little bit of Greek yogurt for some. Oh, oh that's where you get that little tank. You could also use sour cream if you prefer, and then a nice healthy amount of vanilla extract. Mm. In baked goods, vanilla extract kind of acts like the salt. It brings out all of the flavors mm. in the baked good. Uh, so if you want to keep yes, mixing that up. And I notice we keep the wet and dry separate here. Absolutely. We want to keep the wet and dry separate. It's really important to just make Make sure we're mixing the wet together before the dry so that we have a nice even baked good that is really fluffy and delicious. Ladies, awesome so how yeah, we love 
Love it. Delightful. Yummy. Really oh, good. Okay. Delightful. Good. And then we're going to add in some warming spices. We have cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, our flour, all of our rising agents Warming in here. spices. Mm. I didn't, I've never heard them referred nice to as that. Nice and cozy. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take those apples. We're going to add them to the wet ingredients. Okay. And then we're going to mix that all in with the dry ingredients. And it goes into our grease loaf pan. And if you want, you could actually add a little olive oil in there. The fruitiness oh, from the olive oil okay. is really going to add a lovely So this flavor. goes into this. So this goes into this, goes into our pan. We bake it until it a uh, toothpick inserted in the center comes out nice and clean. Mm -hmm. And now we're making the frosting. It's and this time the frosting the frosting. Is frosting. Yummy. That's real good. That's so part. what we're going to do is we're going to cream together butter and butter. Uh, cream cheese. Butter. And we all the butter. Yeah. That's what this holiday is all about. Yeah. There's yeah. even more butter in a second. So get ready. <laughs> so we're going to cream all of this together. And then we slowly, it's not turning out. It, it, yes, it is. It's going to turn out. Oh, there we go. Look I was looking at the wrong side. <laughs> and we're just going to cream that together until it's nice and whipped. We are adding in cinnamon. One of, one of the warm spices. Yes. Yeah. A warm spice. Feeling warm. You're yeah. learning. You're learning. I love it. Some vanilla extract as well. A warm extract. That's yeah. a warm extract. <laughs> a pinch of salt to additionally awaken all of the flavor. And then we're slowly but surely, do you want to add it in? Sure. Adding in that uh, powdered sugar. And this is going to make sure it adds a subtle amount of sweetness, but we don't want too much. Right. I, I don't like when a, a frosting is too overpowering yeah, yeah, and yeah. cloyingly sweet. So we're adding a little bit in. And then a touch of milk to smooth it on out. Okay. And once that is done and whipped to perfection, we're heading on over to our stovetop. This is a fun little extra thing that I think. This just, is unexpected. It's fun, right? Yes. So we're melting oh. a little bit of butter on our on a skillet. Okay. Mm. And once we've sliced up our bread, uh, you take it. Next level. And you toast it on up <laughs> so it gets nice and yeah. toasty. Yeah. It tasted toasty, Elena. Did you, spr did you sprinkle a little salt on top of that frosting? You know I did. It tastes so good. It really nailed it. Yes, that thank frosting you. Is Spot yeah. on. It's not too heavy either. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear that. I and like this that. is a fun dessert that you can serve after the meal. You can also serve it in the morning. I was going to say, it's yeah. breakfast. If you want to do a make ahead, then how do you, like, you make it and then you put it freeze in the it? freezer or the fridge? How yes, long will it you keep? could wrap it in plastic wrap, yeah. then wrap it in foil because we want to make sure no air gets inside of it. We don't want any freezer burn. Yeah. Pop it into the freezer the night before serving, put it into your refrigerator. It will thaw, and then you can slice it up, mm -hmm. griddle it if you want, griddle or you can it. just have it as is. Yes, yes. Put that nice. Nice. Yeah, have it for breakfast, have it for lunch, have nice. it as a snack, have it after dinner. <laughs> Enjoy have it, have have it. it. So good. Long. Yeah. Elena, thank you. Have it while you're meditating on that thing. Oh, oh, I still wish we had it. Oh, we would love that. <laughs> Cannot go wrong with dips. I love dips. I'm a dip head from the old country. Here to show us a few of her favorites is Chef Elena Besser. Hello. So nice to meet you. Oh, it is oh. so great to meet We're you. We're so happy that you're here. Okay, everyone loves that everything bagel seasoning. Oh, addicted. Yeah. Obsessed. Addicted. Okay, so I didn't think about it in a dip, but you say, yes, you can. You can absolutely dip it out, you know? Okay. All about the dips. My dad is, um, I say he's part bagel because yeah. he eats a bagel literally every yeah, day. No, so I this is half Jewish. This, I was like, yeah, oh. Also that. And then, um, I, and I, I this is it. an homage <laughs> to him. And um, so all you have to do, you can buy some gorgeous everything bagel spice at the store. Okay. You can add that on in. To what? I like adding a lot into the cream cheese. That's oh, an important cream cheese component. This is softened cream cheese right okay. here. We also have some sour cream. So what I oh. like to do is just add that on in. Right? It I love sour nice cream. I, I love French onion dip. Do, Do you, you love from the packet? Oh, the oh, onion with dip the, packet? Yes. Lipton's. You just dump it in. Oh, I can rub it on my gums Fritos. sometimes I with the packet. It's, it's so, so nice. Weird. I'm a strange person. I have it growing up. It's the way it's <laughs> Okay, but, right, so okay. So we zest. added lemon juice and zest, and okay. we're just going to continue to mix this on up. Okay. And do you want to help me out? Let's pour in some capers. Let's okay, add some. Mm -hmm. How many? The capers are strong. No, you're kidding. I'm serious. All right. I'm fully serious here. Big caper fan. And you just mix it all some up. Some spring onions. Some spring onions. Let's do it. Absolutely. Great. This adds a nice little crunch. It's like all the things that you love in a bagel in dip form. Oh which my is gosh. The best. I could eat this with a spoon, actually. I'm not joking. Like Would yogurt. you like to? I actually want to try it. Okay, here. Let's here, try here you try with the here spatula. Okay. Thank you very much. Just right Look, there. I'm well, we have the pretty ones right here, but you add a little extra Look, you can scallion on in. top, right? Can I like, tell you something? This is, this is so, so yummy. Mm -hmm. oh, and you so can have tomatoes or cucumbers, whatever yes. you want. Any crudite you want, mm. feel free to leave it out. And it doesn't, you don't just have to have a bagel for breakfast. You can have it whenever you want. With I, love I love that. I love that. That's yummy. seasoning. I can put mm. in anything, the everything bagel. <laughs> Thank you.
The rush of the water, the thrill of the catch. For many, fishing isn't just a hobby or a career, it's a lifestyle. In the U.S., women account for roughly 10% of commercial fishermen, but they've long played a vital role in the global seafood industry. I'm Elena Besser. As a chef, recipe developer, and content creator, I'm always hungry to learn more about the people who keep our food systems running. So I'm heading out to meet two women making waves in the fishing world and creating more space for everyone at the table. Welcome to the lush forests, expansive beaches, and pristine rivers of Washington State's Olympic Peninsula. Pacific Coast indigenous peoples have called these bountiful lands their home for millennia. The Quinault Indian Nation is one of many tribes that fishes, hunts, and forages here. As a non-native, I'm fortunate to be invited to the Quinault Reservation by fishing guide and tribal member, Ashley Lewis. When I think about the rivers, the oceans, the lakes out here. What I think about is home. Ashley comes from a long line of Native Americans who fished these waters for years. In the 1850s, many tribes were forced to give up their land for white settlements, but they retained fishing and hunting rights on traditional lands. During the 1960s, as Washington State began infringing on those rights, Native Americans staged a series of protests known as fish-ins. These protests led to a landmark Supreme Court decision that protects Native fishing rights to this day. One activist at the forefront of that movement was Janet McLeod, dubbed the Rosa Parks of the American Indian Movement. Her advocacy has inspired generations of Indigenous trailblazers, including my guide. When they were forced to cede their land for newcomers, their waterscapes, the rivers, the lakes. It makes so much sense that that was the thing that's like, no, we have to have this because it's so essential to who we are. Quinault tribal members have exclusive hunting and fishing rights on a portion of this river. I couldn't wait to see Ashley's favorite fishing spots with the help of fellow guides Ruben Estevillo and John Tater Royson. If you want to think like a fish, just think like a really lazy person. Great. Like, what is going to be the easiest thing to do? Uh -huh. Is it, do you want to go up that fast water? Not really. You right. want to kind of be in like the slow, easy water. Time for a quick casting lesson. We're just gonna swing straight back, and then we're gonna swing straight forward. You can kind of feel when the current catches it. Okay. Go ahead and give it a shot. That was a good cast. Thank that was you. a great cast. That's high praise coming from Ashley, who's been a guide here for the past decade. Now she's become something of a celebrity among outdoor enthusiasts, amassing a large following on social media where she goes by the handle Bad Ash. Her YouTube and Instagram pages are chock full of how-to videos and inspiring content from her many outdoor adventures. Can you explain to me some of the, you know, stereotypical experiences that you have had that have been a little bit tough as a female fisherman in this community? Being a woman in a male-dominated sport poses challenges. Some people want me to stay in a lane that isn't my lane. I would like to see the outdoor industry be more welcoming to women. I would like to see it be more welcoming to women of color and people of color. I feel really proud to get to chip away at that on my own terms. There we go. Reconnecting with the Quinault and their fishing traditions has been a journey for Ashley. She grew up removed from her tribe, living an hour off the reservation with her mom and two siblings. I grew up in a really small community, moved to a smaller community, one stoplight in town sort of deal. And you had two options. You um, get in trouble or you go fishing. Okay. And I picked fishing. <laughs> I love it. And why did your mom choose to raise you off of the reservation? She experienced a lot of adversity as a younger woman and as a Native American woman. And so some of that adversity caused her to be really protective of her kids. And she wanted us to love our culture. The Quinault are a matriarchal society. Women serve as the head of the household and often take on tribal leadership roles. The women here also help with traditional food gathering. Ashley grew up fishing with her mom, but didn't always appreciate the cultural meaning behind these trips. Tell me a little bit about how you met your tribal family. 
So about the time that I got a driver's license and I could take myself fishing, <laughs> things really changed for me. <laughs> and so I would kind of drive out to the reservation, explore a little bit, being out there among other Quinaults, fishing for salmon, that's everything that I needed. Yeah. And so that moment was profound to me. John Tater Bryson, one of the first professional guides she met on the reservation, soon became her mentor. I was taught from a young age how to harvest elk and deer and fish. And it's passed on to the younger people, so the tradition will keep going. I think I got something. Oh, you definitely do. What a cutie. Oh, hey, my guy. Bye. Ashley enjoys showcasing this beautiful place to new people, but she's also made it her mission to call out the effects of climate change to this land. What we're seeing here, this is a big slide, and we're seeing a lot of this along our river, and this is the effects of climate change. She's currently earning a PhD in Indigenous Studies, with plans to educate people about the tribes of the PNW and the environmental threats they face. With the weather warming, with different rain patterns, it changes the river, but it also changes where fish are going to be spending time. Fishing guides are like an indicator species because we're the ones out in the river day in and day out. We're the ones who see changes happening really quickly. Because of the climate threats to the Quinault, the Biden administration granted the tribe $25 million to help relocate members in flood-prone areas. This is, you know, ancient village sites. This is burial ground sites. And so to see those places washed away, this is a really significant blow to us. Indigenous people are generally the first impacted by climate change, especially if you're situated right on the Pacific Ocean. Sustainability practices are tenets for the Quinault. Three tribal-run fish hatcheries help maintain the populations of salmon and trout species that call this river home. Every spring, millions of salmon and steelhead are released from these hatcheries. So we were a few miles upriver fishing, mm -hmm. but now we're here at the mouth. The Pacific Ocean is right on the other side of our fish house here, and this is where tribal members come and set their nets and commercially fish for blueback sockeye. It's the only place in the world where our blueback sockeye run, so okay, it's an great. incredibly special fish to us. Commercial salmon fishing is a big part of the economy on the res. The most efficient way to get a big catch is by using a method called gill netting. Gill nets are placed near the mouth of the river to catch salmon by the gills as they head upstream. Whoa, double trouble. That's a huge one. As a chef, I've cooked fish many different ways, but this was the freshest catch I've ever tried. Cooking salmon the way her tribe has for generations is a cherished pastime for Ashley, who celebrates her culture through food. The fish is a really wonderful, tasty, oily fish, mm -hmm. and we just want to highlight the greatness that already lives here. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. The flavor that we're going to give it really is going to come from the alder fire and the cedar sticks. After the fish is on the pole, it's supported with cedar sticks woven across the filet. The salmon cooks until it turns light pink, another five minutes, then it's ready to serve. So now we can enjoy ourselves some Quinault fish sticks. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. Hmm. I'm never ever going to look at a normal fish stick ever again in the same way. <laughs> comes right off of that skin. It really doesn't need anything else. Let the food shine. Absolutely. Yeah.
After an incredible day of catching and cooking fish on the Quinault River, it was time for a trip to the beach. At sunrise, my guide Ashley Lewis and tribal biologist Scott Mazzoni are ready to show me another local pastime, digging for razor clams. Can you tell me a little bit more about what we're doing today? We are getting ready to have uh, uh, home use digs, subsistence digs, and commercial digs of razor clams. And before we do that, we got to go out and get clam samples and test them to make sure there's no toxins in them and they're self, uh, safe for people to eat. Pacific razor clams are a meaty shellfish with an oblong shell. They can grow up to six inches. They're also a delicacy here and a major part of the Quinault diet. So we're gonna use these spade tempered shovels. They're kind of curved in a way that makes it easy for us to dig the clams. Great. So we're gonna head out to the surf. We're gonna look for clam shows. As we walk towards the surf, Ashley points out small holes and dimples in the sand. These are known as clam shows, evidence that razor clams are just beneath the surface. That looks like a good spot. Whoa! There we are. Down here they have their foot and that they can use to dig very quickly down into the sand. Hey. He's like, I'm out of here. Thank you and goodbye. Ooh. I gotta tell you, even though it's 5 a.m., all of this razor clam digging is making me extremely hungry and ready to eat them. <laughs> and they are as delicious as they are fun to dig. <laughs> It was finally time for me to see what all the fuss is really about. At nearby Ocean Crest restaurant, razor clams are a menu staple. Head chef Amanda Yeager has prepared a few of their signature dishes made with fresh local clams. On the menu, a panko crusted razor clam steak served with pickled onions and a chili aioli. There's also a razor clam omelet, plus a flatbread topped with Amanda's house-made razor clam sausage. Mmm. There's a common misconception with large clams, you know, oh, would it taste rubbery, but this does not at all. That's a lot of how it's treated. It's, you know, low and slow heat, and that's why they maintain their flavor and their texture. Respect. Wow. So much. Everyone knows and loves a chicken cutlet. This is so tender on the inside. You're getting an amazing, crisp exterior. That crunch and acidity coming from the onion, it is the perfect bite. As my time on the Quinault land comes to a close, I'm already sad to leave this incredible place. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you could say one thing to the people that are watching this, what, what would you want them to know? about you and about this community. My very favorite piece about guiding is not actually the fishing. It is the way that it changes the way people start seeing the natural world. It could tell a lot about history. It could give you a lot of information. But I do know from my experience that when people are there and experience it, they're going to become curious, and that's what I want the most.
When it comes to high-end seafood, lobster is pretty much king. Maine is the largest lobster producer in the country, with catchers here harvesting over 100 million pounds of the crustacean every year. I've just always admired the fishermen, and to even be able to say that I'm a fisherman just means so much to me. Sadie Samuels is the only female commercial lobster boat captain in the small town of Rockport. Her day starts before sunrise when she buys bait for her traps. Hi, Casey. Welcome. Oh, it's so great to find you. Look at this stunning place of work. Are you kidding? With its rocky underwater terrain and cool waters year round, the Gulf of Maine is a perfect home for lobsters. Bye, guys. The lobster industry here generates over $1 billion for the state. But those big bucks aren't made easily. Fishing for lobsters is one of the most dangerous professions. The fatality rate is 2.5 times the national average. Can you tell me a little bit more about how dangerous this job actually is? It's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. The first funeral I ever went to was one of the fishermen in my harbor who went out by himself and he got roped like die on, so he on drowned. lobster, and yes, he drowned. Why do you stay in this despite all of the pain and dangers that you experience on a day-to-day -day basis? I literally never imagined doing anything else with my entire life. Sadie's passion for fishing stems from her childhood. Her father, Matt Samuels, has been catching lobsters for over 60 years. He was up before sunrise and out the door, and then he'd get home and he'd just work until dark and come in and eat dinner and pass out. So the only way I could really hang out with him was if I wanted to like get involved with what he was doing. And then I just stuck around and I never left. <laughs> when she was just seven, Sadie got her student lobster license. She began working right away, dropping a couple traps off her dad's boat for extra cash. By age 14, she saved enough money to buy the boat she still fishes with today. I don't think I fully considered that it was like my career or gonna be my career until a little bit later in life, until I was like 14, 15. I love how you said later in life when I was about 14. I was like, <laughs> just start getting serious about it. You were 14. That is hilarious and amazing. After studying art in college, Sadie quickly returned to a life at sea. Like when I'm out here, I'm just like, this is where I'm supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Today, Sadie doesn't just catch lobsters, she also dishes up fresh lobster rolls at her sea-to-table restaurant, also named Must Be Nice. I would like you to walk me through your day from start to finish, so lay it on me. <laughs> so my average day is waking up around four o'clock, quarter to four, go to the boat, and then we haul about 250 traps, crate up the lobsters that we're bringing over to the restaurant, and then the restaurant closes at seven. In Maine, just 15% of lobster licenses are held by women. But anyone who catches lobsters is called a lobsterman, which Sadie stands behind. How do you feel about the term lobsterman? I'm very much on the side of like, I'm a fisherman, I'm a lobsterman. I busted my butt and paid my dues. Nothing I do really has to do with my gender. Maine fishing laws have strict limits on the number of traps new lobstermen can set. Over time, they can acquire more traps, but it can take several years to make a livable wage. How did you get savvy with making sure that you could function as a successful business? That's actually how I started Must Be Nice Lobster, is on Saturdays, someone was looking for someone to sell lobsters at a farmer's market. I started selling live lobsters there, and then now we're here. The trap limits are part of Maine's successful conservation efforts. In the 90s, there were around 37 million pounds of lobster in the Gulf of Maine. Today, it's nearly 120 million pounds. Fishermen actually were the ones who started to put a lot of those practices in place. Those regulations impose strict sizing guidelines. Sadie actually throws back many of the lobsters she catches. That one will be good next year. 
small lobsters are too young for sale, while many older, large lobsters get thrown back to breed. So this is a, a big hard shell female. You can see on her, if you turned her the other way, She's it's the second terrain swimmerette has this mutilation on it. Got it. Which means that someone else has caught her before with eggs on it. A keeper lobster has a body that measures between three to five inches. It can take a lobster about seven years to reach that size. Finally, a lobster that was just right. Look at those claws. Nice male, really gorgeous lobster. He's definitely a keeper. Yeah, you're coming home with us, babe. Climate change is making these size regulations more crucial than ever. The Gulf of Maine is one of the Earth's fastest warming bodies of water, which can make lobsters more vulnerable to disease and less likely to reproduce. Why is sustainability so important to you? We're so connected with nature and so connected with our environment that it like feels like our duty. At Sadie's restaurant, she's dedicated to sourcing her ingredients sustainably. The lobster chowder uses a seafood stock made from an invasive crab species. And she's adding a new locally raised item to the menu. This season we're adding in oysters and I'm super excited because we're trying to focus as much as we can on female owned farms and also the quality of the seafood is like outstanding. To get a sneak peek at her new menu offering, Sadie took me to meet farm manager Bonita Johnson at Wright Cove Oyster Farm. So tell me a little bit more about these oysters. We're a small operation here. And so we do kind of everything by hand. Wow. And uh, yeah, they're raised with love. You and, can taste it. And yeah, <laughs> you really can. You want to try one real quick? Um, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> I've been waiting over here. <laughs> Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. These wow. are hands down some of my favorite oysters mm. ever. So <laughs> clean, but briny. I've never had anything like this before. I'm blown away. You don't do anything in the working waterfront type of industry unless you have passion for it. Mm -hmm. And that's a really nice thing for us to like get to share with each other. Yeah. This is definitely my happy place. Back at Must Be Nice, Sadie is steaming our catch before picking meat for her signature lobster rolls. Hey, fresh caught, fresh cooked. I just had to know the secrets behind the Sadie sauce lobster roll. So how did you come up with the sauce? So I've had plenty of people, you know, from away say that Maine's lobster rolls are really boring. And I kind of took offense to that. I was yeah. like, you know what? I gotta come up with something that like packs a punch, has a bit of a spice. It starts with shallots, celery, and parsley blended in a food processor. Sadie then adds a not-so-secret blend of dried herbs and spices. Can you reveal 
What's it's in this spice It's mainly blend. paprika. The spicy part is cayenne. A mix of lemon juice and rice wine vinegar kick up the acid. And then there's a generous squeeze of stone ground mustard. Now we just add in the rest of this olive oil and then I'm gonna blend it for a little while until that just seems totally incorporated. There we go. Ooh, that is gorgeous. And that is the Sadie sauce. Sadie packs each toasted bun with a hefty handful of lobster meat. Look at this. Are you kidding me? To finish, a sprinkling of homegrown chives. I can't wait to try that. I'm so pumped. Inspired by Sadie's creativity, I wanted to make something special, a lobster BLT. One of my favorite foods in the summertime is a BLT. And mm -hmm. it really screams summer. And also what screams summer is a juicy lobster roll. So I figured they would pair beautifully together. We're starting with cherry tomatoes. And the reason why I slice the tomatoes first is because I like to hit them with a little bit of salt. Yes, I brought oh, yeah. a little flaky salt. And what this is gonna do is it's really just gonna pull out all those flavors and make them taste as juicy and delicious as possible. This is my best pal mayo. I spice up my mayo with grated garlic, the juice and zest of a lemon, black pepper, and chives. It's such an honor to like cook with the lobster that you have caught. So I just, <laughs> first of all, wanna say thank you because this is like the coolest. You are more than welcome. It is my joy. This is a meat lover's dream. So we're going to add two pieces of bacon Woo! on either side. We're then gonna take a gorgeous lettuce leaf and that's like the boat that's gonna catch all that sauce for us. Just add the lobster, cherry tomatoes, and a final sprinkle of chives. Voila. Well, that is gorgeous. And there you go, BLT lobster roll. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, this might fall Cheers. over me. If it does, it's part of the fun. Cheers. Mmm. <laughs> Holy moly. Oh man. This is insane. This Sadie sauce is slamming. Hubba hubba. I'm honestly having a hard time hearing what you're saying because I'm having a moment with this one over here. Oh my God. This is literally perfect. Yay. At dinner, I couldn't wait to learn more from the women here who support each other through their passion for fresh local seafood. When people see that this is a sea to table restaurant and then they find out that you ladies were the ones that actually caught and grew the food that is being served here. What do they say to you? I feel like people, they're super excited about it and really happy that they found us. Then they can taste it with the quality of our seafood or they're in complete disbelief in like, okay, yeah, but your dad caught these. So they're literally saying to you, <laughs> No, this is a man's job. Well, I think some people have been a little too sheltered and just haven't gotten to see what us women can do. <laughs> and it's up to that. us to show them. Honestly, that's Cheers. another opportunity to toast. I love it. Time to dig in. Mm. I'm really into this BLT one. This is going on the menu, by the way. <laughs> Elena's roll. We're gonna call it Elena's roll. Yay. Ladies, this is a dinner I will never forget, so I truly can't thank you enough for all of your hard work in making this happen, and thanks for hanging out with me. From the smoky salmon of the Quinault Nation to the buttery, sweet lobster of Maine, I'm in awe of our nation's most delicious seafood. But I'm most inspired by the women paving their own paths in this industry and ensuring future generations will have plenty of fish in the sea. Ah, pizza. The golden crust, the tangy sauce, and that ooey gooey cheese. It's no surprise that this divine creation is one of America's most popular foods. But in the countless pizzerias I've been to, it's still pretty rare to see a woman tossing dough or tending a giant oven. I'm Elena Besser. I'm a professional chef, recipe developer, and content creator. So I'm 